Lincoln Financial Field in Philadelphia, an upright blustery day for college football. Syracuse playing for postseason birth, knowing that the last time the Orange came to Philly, they got a loss. Can Temple pull off yet another upset? We'll find out next in the Big East Football Conference Game of the Week. Welcome, everybody, to Philadelphia. Big East football on the air today as Syracuse pays a visit to the Temple Owls. We check out the standings in the Big East Conference. Can you believe this? Syracuse still has a chance to win the Big East title. They'll need lots of help, and it'll start today by knocking off this Temple Owls ball club. Hi again, everybody. Along with John Kajemi, I'm Dave Sims. Glad you could join us. And let's talk about Temple right off the get-go. Their quarterback, Walter Washington, is one of the dynamic performers in all of college football. He's the main guy Syracuse must stop today. Well, for Temple's offense, it all starts with the quarterback because he can beat you on the ground, but also underrated passer is Walter Washington. Seven touchdown passes and over 1,700 yards through the season. 19 total touchdowns. He has 12 of those rushing, and that's where he can beat you, running the football. Big, strong, confident confident quarterback that really loves to run the option on the edge, but last week, his head coach, Bobby Wallace, said it was the finest performance of the season. Three total touchdowns. He had over 115 yards and 117 yards running the football, over 200 yards throwing the football, Dave. So this is a guy that is on a bit of a roll. They just haven't shown up in the W column, so they're going to try to do that today, run the football effectively, and see a lot of running number 11. Well, Pasqualoni said this is a classic trap game. Now, while Temple has its main guy available, Syracuse does not not have the same luxury. Walter Reyes, their outstanding running back, last week against Pittsburgh, it was senior day, and he got the orange on the board early. But then later on in the game, he takes the shot from Tez Morris. Shoulder out, and he could be out for a while, and he will not be available today. So, that means somebody's got to carry a load. And here's what Walter Reyes has done to this point. He's all over the record books at uh, Syracuse University. We'll detail that. So, who fills the void today? Well, it's going to have to be Damian Rhodes. And, and that's the guy. It's been the one-two punch for the Orange offense all season long. Last week against Pittsburgh, 103 rushing yards and a touchdown in overtime. He has seven total touchdowns, but he hasn't played for four quarters. That's going to be the test. Can he play as high at a high level in the fourth quarter as he starts the game in the first quarter? And for Temple, they'll have to gang tackle him. Sure enough, and Walter Reyes exchanging some pleasantries and some counseling with Damian Rhodes. We'll hear from Walter Reyes coming up next. Hear from Philly. Get an eyeful of the Hyundai Sonata, named highest ranked entry midsize car in initial quality by J.D. Power & Associates. The Sonata is handsomely styled, loaded with standard features, and built with a commitment to initial quality that lets Hyundai offer America's best warranty. Ten years. Napa, get the good stuff. to Lincoln Financial Field, everybody. We're moments away from the kickoff today. Temple and Syracuse. And joining us right now is Syracuse running back Walter Reyes out with a shoulder injury. And Walter, first of all, tell us, uh, will you be able to return for the game in two weeks against BC? Um, I hope so. Um, you know, my shoulder's really sore right now. Um, but I've been working with the training staff uh, every day. I'm getting three treatments a day. And uh, it's feeling a lot better by each day. So uh, hopefully uh, I'll be ready to go when we play BC. When with you not available, Walter uh, Rhodes is going to get the uh, get the play today. Can he carry a big load today? Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, Damian uh, has done a great job over his career um, of preparing himself. Um, if something did happen, like myself getting injured, um, he stepped in big time last week in a big time game against Pitt and uh, did very well. So uh, Damian is more than ready to, to carry the load. All right. Postseason wise, so you hope to be available real quick on today's game. This is going to be a heck of a test for you against the Temple team. Oh, yeah. Temple's a, a very hungry team. Um, you know, Coach Bobby Wallace uh, has his team always ready. And, uh, you know, we're, we're here at their stadium. And it's going to be a, 
an interesting matchup because uh, you know they have a great quarterback on Walter Washington. Uh, they have a great linebacking core on defense, so it's a it's a big challenge for us. Postseason uh, aspirations. Do you think you guys can get into a bowl this year? Uh, definitely. Um, that, that's the main goal. Um, you know that's. Uh, that's why we play this game, you know, uh, to, to, to play hard and make your victories and hopefully uh, with a win today uh, will make us bowl eligible. Well, good to see you. Best of luck, and hopefully uh, we'll see you back in the field in a couple of weeks. Okay, thank you, Dave. Paul Pascalone, his ball club, will get the ball to start today's action. Temple won the toss. And they deferred. And John and Jimmy, let's take a look at your Napa keys to the game. Brought to you by Napa Auto Care Center. Well, I think for Paul Pascaloni and the Orange, they have to dominate the line of scrimmage. Without Walter Reyes in there, Damian Rhodes carrying the load, Adam Terry, Jason Green, Matt Terrell, they have to create some some openings for the running game. And also they have to gang tackle. They have to get on Walter Washington a lot, not let him beat him. Not a one-man gang beat them on defense. And for Bobby Wallace in the Temple Owls, coming off a loss last week, 42-21 at West Virginia, their keys. Well, on the flip side, you know, run, run Walter Washington. He has to, nothing cute, just run their offense and, and make him the focal point. And defensively, if I'm, if I'm their defense, I want to pound Damian Rhodes and show me that he can beat me for four quarters. Damian Rhodes, outstanding performer, great change of pace guy. When you uh, tandem him with Walter Reyes. And Rhodes is back there deep to receive the opening kickoff along with Diamond Ferry. We'll talk a lot about Diamond Ferry. He's a guy that forms so many roles here for the Syracuse Orange. And Ryan Lux, a junior from Wildemar, California, has it teed up. And we are ready for action here at Lincoln Financial Field. Glad you could join us. A high kick and short. Ferry bobbins at about the seven. Picks it up there. And he's swarmed under and taken down. Pretty good kick coverage. Justin Johnson, a backup defensive back, makes the tackle for Temple. So Ferry, we'll see. We'll, we may even see him on short yardage situation. Here's a look at Perry Patterson from Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Big Eagles fan, so you know he's excited about playing here in Philly today with a lot of friends and family on hand. Seventh in the Big East in passing yards per game. Boy, he is a big quarterback, too. It's 6'4", 250. Joe Kovaleski resets. Tight end on the right side. They bring Steve Gregory in motion, and here's Rhodes, and he breaks one already. 25-yard line and run out of bounds at the 27-yard line, and he's run out of bounds by one of the DBs. And that's Ray Lamb as we take a look at the backs and receivers. Steve Gregory's led the club in receptions the last three weeks. Breon Evans getting the start at fullback with Greg Hanoi and out with a hand injury. Matt Tarullo made academic All-American for the third straight year. Pretty good offensive line. Adam Terry's a guy that uh, the Pro Scouts have liked for a long time as well. 13-yard game by Rhodes on that first play. Kovaleski in motion. And Patterson with his first throw. Throws short. And he's got Rice Moss. Moss caught his first pass in his career last week. And he picks up about eight here to the 35-yard line. Rice Moss is the cousin of the Vikings All-Pro, Randy Moss. Temple on defense, they like to throw about their linebackers, but more on them in a second. When we were here a few weeks ago, Mendenhall and Wormley and Lindsey, they had outstanding games. Bennett and Wallace are the guy that, the two guys that everybody talks about, the number one and two tacklers on this ball club. Second down and short for the Orange, and they got a Rhodes, got a good block on the edge, and a pretty good tackle by Ray Lamb. Lamb prevents some more damage because Rhodes was out there. He had the first down and more. Well, Dave, early Syracuse offensively showing you a little bit of everything, and we'll talk about that secondary, Ray Lamb, who came up on that play, but they like to, to pressure the corners, and they have two good corners, but they've been decimated with injuries. That has been a problem all year for the Temple Owls. Defensively, they've ranked last in the Big East Conference, giving up 438 yards a game. Jared Jones was the motion man. And now to give it to Rhodes, and he tried to bounce it outside, nothing doing there. Good play by Sadiq Kante, the Owl safety. He's number 35, senior out of Albuquerque, New Mexico. 
Dave, early in this game, the Orange offense have shown you a little bit of everything. They've seen Rhodes get to the outside. They've had an option play, a little pass to the freshman, Rice Moss. So they've done a little bit of everything. But the one thing they have done is they get Rhodes to the outside. His season numbers, he's a home run hitter. He can make you miss. And he has seven touchdowns on the season. And he's been gashing people through the tackle. Rhodes flanks to the top of your screen. And they bring in... Jeremy Sellers, there's a rollout, Patterson got time, throwing it deep down the middle, and Jones, the intended receiver, is overthrown as Patterson really took a lick in there. It's interesting, it looked like quarterback Patterson thought that Jones was going to take it deeper downfield, but Jones had... It was a bad angle. Yeah. It was a very bad angle, and Perry Patterson thought he had somebody down the field. Perry's numbers on the season, you see the touchdown interception, interception ratio at sixes, but he's done a good job, and he's gotten better every game. Right, right, right by Jones, he could have smoothed it off going straight across the field. Rhodes carries 21 yards, here's Patterson, got time, and that ball got knocked out. A.J. Lindsey, number 74, raised up, and knocked that pass down, and that's going to force a punt. Well, we talked to Bobby Wallace about that defensive unit yesterday, and he said they haven't played that poorly this year. They just have been a victim to injury and bad field position, so he expected his team to come out and play well off of that uh, tough loss last week at West Virginia. Here's Brendan Charney. He's back home. He's from Valley Forge, Bobby Pennsylvania. Went to Mount Prep. Bill Porter back to receive. Party, the number two punter to Adam Gressel. In the Big East Conference at 14th National. Gets off a low liner. That's not a good one. Bounces at the 30. And it takes a temple bounce to about the 29 yard line. So not much on that punt. Just 27 yards on that punt. It's a decent field position for the Temple Owls to open up on the offensive side of things as they uh, get a stop against Syracuse in the opening possession. Walter Washington, what a campaign he's had. 55% completion. Leads the Big East with 12 touchdowns. He's a guy that when we saw him here a few weeks ago, a lot he can do. Temple runs up the middle on the first play of the game. Take a look at that Temple lineup. Phil Goodman's their number one receiver. He's got 38 catches. A bunch of tall receivers. Goodman, Juku, and Ebay are all all very tall at 6'4", uh, 6'3", six, six, and 6'3". On that offensive line, C.J. Bloomball was in the uh, Swedish Marines. And they've done, this group has done a pretty good job protecting for Walter Washington. They don't have to give him but so much room. He can get through there. Second down. And Washington completes his first throw. And he's got a first down and more. Got it outside to Ikichuku, the senior out of Largo, Maryland. First down, Temple. Gain of 15 on that play. Good throw. Syracuse on the defensive side of things. Syracuse sixth in defense in the conference this year. Watch for James Weiss. He was a co-defensive player of the week two weeks ago. Jerry Mackey, 75 tackles. He's tied for the lead on the team with Diamond Ferry. Kellen, uh, Kelvin Smith has two interceptions. First and 10 for Temple. Ball's at the Owls 48. And they try to run with Tim Brown, the junior from Stockton, California. Not a lot doing there as he runs to the left. Tackle made by James Weiss. Diamond Ferry, ball pass Maloney. Simply says about him, he's a football player. You name it, he'll do it. We may see him in short yardage situations as well. The good news, DeAndre Lakai is healthy. So that means Smith and Ferry are playing at their normal positions. And their rotation is not affected the way it was last week when Lakai was playing with a bad shoulder. Yeah, and Dave, both of those guys are going to have to tackle well because you're going to see Walter Washington break on the edge. It'll be Diamond Ferry and Anthony Smith making the majority of the tackles. Second down and nine. Temple at its own 49. And a front and about a yard short of a first down to Juku. Juku came in with 24 catches. Picked up eight on that play. He's the uh, second leading receiver on the ball club behind Phil Goodman. 
Well, Dave, there's a, a big win, and we haven't really mentioned it a lot, but we saw it on the opening kickoff, and now we're seeing Temple move into a little bit of a, a high-paced offense, and they, they're with that wind right now, and you see them throwing the football a little bit more than normal to open or start a football game, and Walter Washington, he gets hot early in this game. That could spell trouble for the Orange in their defense. That's why Temple, when they won the toss, the bird, try to run Washington off the edge, and uh, Syracuse was waiting for that. They got absolutely nothing. James Weish, number 90, ran that play down from behind. Boy, and they got a, an excellent spot at Temple on the uh, near side linesman. I'm not sure if Walter Washington gained uh, the, the uh, enough yardage for the first down, but with the spot, it looks like he may have it. Washington, 6'2", 240. 21 rushes, a buck 17 last week. Two touchdowns against West Virginia. He threw it 16 for 24, 206, a touchdown and a pick. And he does pick up the first down. But not a bad campaign for Washington. I mean, when you consider, I mean, he's a one-man band. This is ball club still looking for its first conference win this year. But Washington, sixth in Big East rushing, fifth in passing yards per game, fourth in total offense. Number one in scoring and seventh in passing efficiency. He's had an unbelievable season, and for a, a one-win football team, 19 total touchdowns, and, and that leads the Big East. But he's done a nice job of mixing it. You know, you, you think of him as a runner, but he can throw the football given time. No question about it. He's got a first and 10. He's in Syracuse territory at the 42. They run the little guy, Tim Brown. Look at that leg drive. He ran through the tackle of Jerry Mackey. He buried Jerry Mackey for a couple yards there. Less than play. Yeah, not a big guy, Tim Brown. 5'8", 185-pound junior out of Stockton, California. And did a good job running against Jerry Mackey that time. And you have to credit that offensive line. All Tim Brown needs is a small crease to get through. But Walter Washington is the key. You have to watch him faking the Tim Brown and getting on the edge. Second down at six. At the 38 of Syracuse. Brown trying to get around the corner. Does well to get close to the line of scrimmage. Pretty good force in there by Anthony Smith. The free safety. Terrific pursuit on that play. And Tim Brown trying to go to the short side, but Anthony Smith would have nothing of it. Anthony did a great job last week switching from his safety position up to the corner and in the season he's third in tackles with 64 two interceptions but the three block kicks are probably the highlight of his no season he's done an outstanding job on special teams and he's a guy that's a sure tackler in the open field Paul Pascoli can count on him making the tackle third down and five at the 37 Temple goes with a cluster of receivers top of your screen long count by Washington Hands fires and it's got a receiver good for the first down. It's Phil Goodman and the spot there is going to be inside the 31-yard line. Good for first down for Temple. It's a good-looking drive by these outs. Six yards on that pickup. Two years ago, Syracuse came in here and lost 17 to 16. And Callum Barber missed an extra point late in the game. Talking to Paul Pascaloni, he said, I can still hear the bonk. I remember right. the bonk. It's a that bad was, dream. That was at the vet. In Boston College and West Virginia. The Eagles leading. DC at 2 and 1. And there's a nice run by Tim Brown. Starting inside the 25 to the 23 yard line. So this is a nice drive that started back at the 29-yard line, and Temple pretty methodical moving right down the field against the Syracuse Orange Ball Club. Defensively, sixth in the conference. Temple, total offense-wise, is in the Big East. Well, Dave, the key will be, can Temple score seven? They have to come in, and they've had an excellent drive already. Nine plays and 46 yards, but they have to cash in for seven points. Second down at four to 24. Now the whistle blows around five rushes for 15 yards, Washington three for three passing for 30 yards to this point. Referee today is Dennis Hennigan. Play clock wasn't running, so they got that reset. It's good for the players at both ends down low behind the goalpost. Not only do they have a, the, uh, the game clock, but they have the play clock as well. Second down at four. Temple at the series 24. Washington with time going for six. Got a man down there and he badly overthrows Goodman. It was just as well. Yeah, the like Kyle was there. Decent coverage. Temple not messing around. They are going for it. This is uh, Paul Pasqualoni said, hey, this is a classic trap game. 
And you, you can only say that to your team so many times because you know, after a while you, you start to believe it. So you want to alert your team that you know we have to play at a high level just like we did at home last week in that double overtime victory. But they have to you know not start believing that. Simple. On third down conversion, sixth in the conference, and defensively Syracuse is sixth in the conference on third down defense, and Temple has to call a timeout. So that's their first of the day. 12.21 to go here in the first quarter at Lincoln Financial Field. Actually, I read that. I read the time of day. Reduce friction and deliver peak performance. Because too much friction. Such a little gear at any. Nice haircut. Quaker State peak performance. Try Quaker State Winter Oil for easier startup and improved performance all winter long. Welcome back to Philadelphia. No score on this windy, blustery day for college football. 7.36 to go on a fast-moving first quarter. And wind out of the north at 14 miles an hour, 43 degrees. The temperature and a wind chill of 35. 10th play, 11th play on this drive. Here's Washington for the swing. Got a man there. Nice kick for Goodman at the five. Size 6'3, 220, 24 yards scoring play. The fourth TD catch for Goodman and for Walter Washington. That'll be his eighth TD pass of the season. Great acceleration through the football. Phil Goodman attacks it. A 24 yard strike from Walter Washington and the Owls strike first. Boy, that timeout proved to be uh, right on the button. Low snap, but it is it, it is booted through. And Temple. <laughs> Takes a 7-0 lead. Nice stop by Mike McLaughlin, the holder. Danny Murphy's able to bang it through. Bill Goodman comes through. Nice catch there. And look at the strength in the big hands to take it across as Temple leads 7-0. Welcome back, everybody. 7-0 Temple Owls on top of the Syracuse Orangemen. And Coming into this game, Syracuse with a chance to win, still with a chance and some help to win that Big East title. And Temple, though, comes out and makes a statement. 24 yards on the hookup to Goodman. Well, 5-16, 8 on the clock on that drive, too. 11 plays, 71 yards. And Walter Washington, very impressive. 4-5 of five for 55 yards on the drive. Temple did a good job converting on its third downs, too, during that drive as we look at Diamond Ferry, 11th in the nation in kick returns. When we saw the wind, Dave, on that opening kickoff, Diamond Ferry had a little bit of, of a tough time catching the football. Let's see what happens on the second. There's another high short one. Rhodes comes up to get it. Rhodes finds a hole and then taken down hard at about the 34-yard line. And he got taken down by Christian Dunbar. Terrific throw and catch. Walter Washington versus press coverage. Just throws a dime to the inside. Just a quick slam. Look at the ex extension of the football. Just trying to get it across the goal line is Phil Goodman. You'd like to see him tuck it away, but he was very sure of himself on that play. And, and so were the coaches. I thought it was an excellent call on third down versus press coverage. Attack the defense, and that's what the Owls did. That was very impressive. Here's Syracuse starting at its own 34. Ooh, good play in the backfield. As Sellers did not have a chance. He got taken. That's the second good play we've seen by Anton Jr. Lindsay. A.J. Lindsay. Terrific job off the line of scrimmage. He just beats the block of the offensive lineman. It looked like Matt Terrillo, the center, was trying to down block him. And that was just sure speed and strength by A.J. Lindsay to get inside of the block and get into the orange backfield. Lost a one on that play. Second down and 11 at the 33 for the orange. The bubble screen. They get it out to Steve Gregory. Gregory tripped up. Gain a three on the play. Jermaine Hargraves, junior out of San Francisco. A good open field tackle that time by Jermaine Hargraves. Came in with 16 total tackles, but none better than that one. When you're at that corner position, you're out on that island. That's a tough play, and he made it look easy. Just a quick screen, as you said, to the outside, and nice tackle on one of the fastest players in the, the Orange has on offense. Got to play, you better make the yes. play. Yes. <laughs> Madison back to throw, flush, hangs in, fires, nice hook up there, that's good for first down, far side to Steve Gregory. 
first down orange. The thing that's so impressive when you talk about Patterson, that's a gain of 16. Paul Pasqualoni and the staff says, you know what? He's so coachable. He wants to be coached, and he just soaks up everything you, you throw at him. And Dave, watch his feet on this play. He resets himself perfectly within the pocket. He felt pressure to the right. He just slides. But those are the things they've been working on, making him play a little faster. And you can see the feet catching up with his eyes that time. There's Gregory in motion. They fake the end around and run straight up the gut. And they go with Rhodes, and he got taken down by the backer, Troy Bennett. Number two tackler on the club. Senior out of Paulsboro, New Jersey. He and uh, Ryan Wallace with a combination of our best friends. They both are dads. The families hang out together. Four yards on that game. They both have to make a lot of plays for this Temple defense to be successful today against the Orange. Second down at six at the 42. 7 nothing Temple on a Goodman TD pass, a 24-yarder from Washington. They run up the middle, Rhodes looking to break it to the outside, nothing doing. Temple would have nothing of that. Mike Mendenhall, the junior out of Gibbstown, New Jersey, number 45, makes the stop. Mendenhall played a terrific game when we were here a few weeks ago against Pittsburgh. Had a sack uh, for safety, as a matter of fact. Mike Mendenhall is a good player. He's a solid player. And right now, this Temple Owl defense is playing pretty tough. They're always going to give you their best punch in this first quarter. And whether they can withstand it for three more quarters and, and play up to that level is yet to be seen. But they're doing a nice job against this offensive line for Syracuse. Two yard loss sets up a third and eight. Patterson hangs and there's Gregory on a crossing pattern. That's good for first down inside the 35 to the 34-yard line. Gain of 10, first down orange. Steve Gregory was hurt for most of the early part of the season. He's come back the last three games and led the ball club in receiving. Glad you could join us for Big East football. We're in Philadelphia today at Lincoln Financial Field. Dave Sims, John King, Jimmy. Syracuse at 3-1, Temple 0-4, last time Syracuse was in Philadelphia. The Owls came away with a 17-16 victory, tossed the road, student body left, and they do get there. You can hear somebody in the Temple sidelines already get there, and they did. Sadiq Conte and Darrell Davis, number 23, make the play. Well, we know Damian Rhodes has terrific speed to the outside, and so does Conte, 35 defensively for Temple. Just keeps pursuing to the sideline and does an excellent job. Gets a lot of help. You can see a lot of bodies around Damian Rhodes, and that's what has to happen. You have to gang tackle this guy, and you have to hit him hard to start this game. You remember Damian Rhodes taking the brunt of the work from Walter Reyes, who's injured today. Saw so Adam Terry leading the way. Second down and five. And around the left side, Rhodes has got the ball. Let's see. Got brought, brought down by Rodney Warmley. Number 89, the junior from Oxon Hill, Maryland. Other action in college football, top 25, number 9, Michigan. Trailing at the big house, the Northwestern. The Boston College. West Virginia, West Virginia on beat 4-0 in the Big East. Dave, this would be a great time. Joe Kowalowski didn't catch a pass last week against Pittsburgh, but Evans and Kowalowski to the, you know, that combination, you might want to watch for a pass here. The right. back as well. Out of the eye, first and 10 from the Temple 22. And they fake the throw, and they run road straight up the gut again. Good blocking on the right side, running behind Steve Franklin, the right guard, and Quinn on Janaka, the right tackle. Good-looking unit. Terry, Green, Cherulo, Franklin, and Ajanak. Boise State, San Jose State. The 9 a.m. start in oh, California. Man. Boise State making some noise. Iowa and Minnesota tied at three. First and ten. Make that second and five, beg your pardon. Rhodes, eight carries, 41 yards. And Rhodes again. And he gets slowed up. He got slowed up in the backfield by Adam Fickner out of Mars, Pennsylvania, 6'3", junior. Pretty good penetration by the D-line. Boy, it was terrific. They've been doing an excellent job, and, and 
winning on first and second down. And right now, Temple, third and around five yards to go. So the, the, biggest, the biggest play their defense is going to face now is to try to keep this lead. They've only had a lead a couple times in the season. Once against Pittsburgh, and they couldn't hold it. Let's see what happens here against Syracuse. The Orange, two of three on third down, going against the Temple defense. That is fourth and fast defense, last and run defense. Deep drop, Patterson hangs in, throws, and it is broken up. Trying to feed it in to Jared Jones, and the coverage not bad by Andrew Turner, number 14, the junior from Compton, California. Well, Perry Patterson was scanning the field. You'll watch him look to his left first. He comes back to the right and finally tries to drill the football down the middle. But a good play by Andrew Turner gets that right arm on the football. Let's see if he had his back as well. He might have had that left arm turning Jared Jones. It wasn't called, but a good strip of the football by Turner. 35-yard field goal attempt pretty much straight on by Callan Barber, who made a won one for two last week. He made just two of his last ten. High snap, low kick through the air, and he missed it. Kellen Barber, two of his last 11 now, missing from 35 yards out. It's been that kind of year for Paul Pascaloni and the Syracuse Orange. It'll be five-yard field goal by Kellen Barber. Bad memories of two years ago. Right here at the late, at the late lamented, well, maybe not lamented. No. <laughs> Just late. 2-11 to go here in the first. Tim Brown looking for room on the outside, finds a crease. Nice gain across the 25 to, to the late 20. flag. Sure was, very late flag. A couple of years ago, there's R.J. Anderson, and he feeds it in. Jared Jones makes the catch. Point after it was not a gimme. Joinked it, boinked it, missed it. And Temple comes away with a one-point win. And Barber missed that one. Holding number 21 on the offense. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat first down. So Brian Albrooks, junior wide receiver from San Diego, called for that foul. Boy, Dave, that hurts too. First down, if you're Temple and you win on first down, you get a big run by Tim Brown to, to start the momentum again, and you get a holding penalty to start you back deep in your own end behind the 15-yard line at the 14. Temple with a 7-0 lead. First possession, they went right down the field. 11 plays, 71 yards at 516. Walter Washington went 4 for 5 passing for 55 yards and hooked up with Bill Goodman on a 24-yard TD pass. It's amazing Brown to find this spot. Boy, there's a great close coming in to make that tackle. Somebody came flying. There it was Smitty. That's right, Anthony Smith. He is so comfortable coming out of the free safety spot. Watch number 20 come in your picture from your left. Well, first of all, I don't know how Tim Brown got out of that mess, but Anthony Smith is coming with a lot of speed. Also, Tenard Jackson. Yeah, Tenard Jackson is on the play. play. Yeah. So Smith was in there, but Tenard Jackson is the guy that missed one. Really polished him off. Second down and 13 at the 17-yard line. Oh, he made a man miss. Made another miss at the 40. What a play by Walter Washington. First down, Temple to the 43 yard line. No flags. Oh, that's a big time run of 26 yards. He was dead to rights back there. Walter Washington, 240 pounds. He's 6'2, but watch the elusiveness. When he decides to tuck it and put it under his arm, he can make you miss. Whoop, one, there's one on the outside. Another move to the inside. And then he just pounds Anthony Smith, and it's a terrific job of having great vision and being that elusive to not take the pounding that he normally has to take when he runs the football. Kellen Pruitt had the whip. Smith, I think that uh, Tim Brown, and then he a big dose to the 5'8 junior from Stockton, California. JC All-American City College of San Francisco. Gets it across the 45 to the 46 yard line. Brown, eight carries, 25 yards to this point. Came in averaging 4.2 yards a carry with a couple of touchdowns to his credit. Kinesiology major. Well, it's exactly the way Temple wanted to open up this football game with the lead, you know, going into the second quarter. Absolutely. Kill some clock, get the lead, and they already know that this uh, 
going to be a heck of a contest. Cold, blustery day here in Philadelphia. The temple feeling pretty warm about itself right now with a 7 0 lead. So far today, Phil Goodman and the Owls have played pretty well. It's 7-0 Temple as we begin the second quarter in a must game for Paul Pascalone and the Orange, who still harbor hopes winning the Big East Conference Championship this year if they can get a whole bunch of help. Second down at 7, Temple at its 46. And they go at the end of the round. It's going to be wide. Oh, oh my goodness! The quarterback in high school. He's a sixth year senior. He's had a couple of medical hardships. And what a play call there. Boy, terrific job coming out and really making a, a surprise call. First play of the second quarter. He said a wide open receiver down the field is Bucci Ebay. And he takes it inside the five down to the two yard line. David Brock, the offensive coordinator, taking the shackles off. 51 yards on the play. Washington will take it himself. Washington down to the one. He got taken out by Kadir Drame. Number 70 in Syracuse on its heels right now with Temple knocking on the door. Second down and goal. Well, I think you just have to run Walter Washington again in this situation, but watch the play call. Just an excellent job of setting it up and a great job by Chuku to get the football out. This is a stiff win that he just threw that ball into. It's you have to be a, a former quarterback to, to throw a ball like that, and he got it done. Tim Brown, the deep back, now into the backfield. Washington folds in. He has got... He was in. I don't know if I thought he was. He was clearly in. How did they not see that from our angle? It looked like he was in. Boy, both linesmen say no. That's remarkable. I don't know about that. It looked like Walter Washington clearly had the football across the goal line. Brings up a third down in goal. Temple leading 7-0. Take another look, Dave. He gets a little crease off the right guard. And right there, right his there, shoulders, shoulder. the, half of his body looks like it's in the end yeah. zone. Jerry Mackey pulled him back. What a bad ball. Third and goal. Inches away for Temple. Washington. Jumps in. Does he get it? He's got a touchdown, Temple. 13 nothing Owls. And the Temple Owls. Winless to this point the Big East season. Winless last year. We have to go Woo! back to two years ago to beat Rutgers and Syracuse. And here they are with a 13-0 lead. Let's give a little credit to David Brock for that call to open up the second quarter. Really ate up a huge chunk of yardage and put Walter Washington in a position to go over on third down. And Lutz point after. Is good. 14 nothing Temple. Yes, that is a surprise. As the Owls, a little bit more than a touchdown underdog, lead by two here in Philly. The best reason to drink better. eBay with the halfback option. Oh 51 yards, part of an eight play EDR drive in four minutes. And the Owls have a 14 0 lead against the Syracuse Orange. Here's the Lux kick. Line drive goes to Rhodes, left side. Rhodes at the 30. And he got taken down by one of the backup DBs, Christian Dunbar, backup tight end, number 46. Got him up high, 24 yards in return. DC by a touchdown at West Virginia right now. Well, that would be a, a difficult place to pull out a victory in Morgantown, but Boston College off to a, a seven-point lead early in the game. So Perry Patterson... Young man, the game's on you. Absolutely. And this is a situation, really, that he has not been in on the road. You know, Syracuse on the road in the last 25 games, 7 of 18. So 7 and 18 in the last 25 games. Patterson hangs top, top off. He had another drop. Boy, that machine on a short post there. He 
hit Jared Jones right in the chest. And Jones is limping off right now. Was it last week that he had? We saw that Patterson had three, four drops. Yeah. And he beat him up in the Syracuse against Rutgers. He had four overthrows. And then last week, about three or four big drops just like that. Patterson, four of eight, 39 yards. And so far, he's been on the money. He's throwing the football into the wind very accurately. I think this is the tougher way to throw it when you have a, a big wind at your back. Second down from the 35. Block, but Rhodes got taken down from behind. Boy, I was looking downfield, and I thought he had some big run, big running room to do some damage there. And he got taken down by Bobby Fulmore. Well, that was an excellent tackle because it looked like Dave. I agree with you. One, you make one person miss, and you're on the edge to the house. And Bobby Fulmore did an excellent job of coming from the inside out. I don't believe Damian Rhodes ever saw Bobby Fulmore. Rhodes, 10 carries, 45 yards. Third down and five. Orange at their 40. Patterson in trouble and opens up. Got the first down. He's able to recover it at the 49-yard line, but a first down nonetheless for the Orange. A gain of nine. I think that orange sideline just a, <laughs> a sigh of relief because you make a big play. Perry Patterson breaks contain. It's a big body on the other side for quarterback, but then he just loses the football, and luckily for Syracuse, it rolls right back to Perry Patterson, but a good strip by Rodney Wormley coming from that defensive end position. Patterson was lucky to get back on that football. Sure was. Jared Jones back in the game. Two fumbles, two recovered by Syracuse thus far. Orange from its 49. A lot of fakers. Patterson all day to throw. Got a man running free. Over to Jones, who was clearly there. He beat the corner, Andrew Turner. Well, Dave, you made the point earlier. Perry Patterson was very accurate last week, had a lot of drops. Well, there's been games where he's had guys open down the field, and he hasn't connected probably six, seven times throughout the year. Here, with the wind behind you, it's a very tough throw to be accurate down the field. You have to take a little bit more off of it, put more air under the football. Second down and 10 at the 49. Gregory in motion. Two-step drop, slant thrown behind the intended receiver, Rice Moss. Paul Passmore, he didn't say nothing about that young man, Rice Moss. He said, he's a beautiful strider like, like Rob Moore, but a good runner, but the stride is maybe even much more quite great this mile. That's a dangerous combination. Yeah. That is something pretty to watch. At times, poorly thrown. Syracuse, three of five. On third down this afternoon, third down and 10 here from the 49, Rice Moss. They want his development for the future to start right now. Here's Patterson hanging, firing at a man there, good for the first down. Jones make that Gregory with the big catch to the 25-yard line for the Orange. First down, a gain of 26. David, all starts with protection, and Perry Patterson had plenty of time to look over the secondary and find Steve Gregory wide open. Watch Patterson get back and feel confident in the pocket, step up past A.J. Lindsay, and then just throw a strike down the Syracuse sideline to Steve Gregory. Nice job by Gregory to keep it alive. Gregory at the bottom of your screen. Jones at the top of his first and 10 at the 25. Rhodes gets the carry. And Rhodes got it to that second level in a heartbeat. Got it to the 19-yard line, gain of seven. Well, we talked about Temple in their first series, getting in scoring position and needing to get seven. Well, Syracuse does not want to get into a situation where they have to send Colin Barber out to kick a field goal here. They need seven points to answer Temple. Sure do. Jones left. Greg going to make that Lendell Bembo. Number seven is at the bottom of the screen. Reset Kovaleski, the tight end, to the near side. Fake the bubble screen, run the draw straight up the middle. And Fulmore makes the tackle on Rhodes. Well, he was grabbing at that ball. He almost got to the 15-yard line, and Rhodes was uh, fortunate to hold on. 
It looked like that ball was going to get out of the grasp of Damian Rhodes, who's been pretty productive this afternoon. He has 12 rushes for 56 yards, close to his season average of 5.1 yards. It's 4 7 on the day, but he's 12 rushes already in this football game. Good drive here by the Orange of Syracuse, first and 10 at the 14. Slow developing play to give a taste of the fullback who does well to keep it alive as long as he has. They can't bring him down. It's Breon Evans, the red shirt freshman out of Bristol, Connecticut. Favorite athlete, Jerome Bennis, and he played like the bus on that one. He sure did. E.J. Lindsey coming back on the field. Evans, 5'11", 236. He refused to go down. Well, just a, a bad quarterback center exchange added to the and timing in the backfield being thrown off. Lindsey had him, and yeah, it was tough to bring down. It was Evans, 38, the fullback. And half the uh, Syracuse coaching staff out on the field trying to figure out what went wrong. But uh, they'll try to figure it out on second down. But yeah, Rhodes now is the up back, and the deep back is Jeremy Sellers. Second and 14 at the 18. Got a man down there. Knocked away at the last second. Oh, man, did he prevent six? That was Ray Lamb, the junior from Fort Worth, Texas. The tight end, Joe Kovaleski. Had some space there. It wasn't a bad, pretty good throw there by Patterson. That was a great throw and an even better defensive play. It looked like that ball was just going to get over the outstretched left arm of Ray Lamb at the last minute. He gets a hand on it. You bet Kovaleski was saying, just get over it. It's an easy six points. Great extension by the cornerback. Rhodes will flank him to the bottom of the screen here. Sellers is the deep back. Patterson, 5 of 12, 65 yards. Looking underneath. And, ooh, there's a lick there. Gregory, he took a pop from Ryan Wallace. Big time hit there by the preseason All-American. Second team all big East a year ago. He a five. And now let's check in on the Bobo Big East leaders and Ryan Wallace. Number one in tackles in the ball game in, uh, in the conference. And his teammate Troy Bennett right there. Diamond Fur. Look at all these guys that are performing today. This will be an attempt from 30 yards out by Colin Barber. Missed from 35. His first attempt today. Two of his last 11. Snap placement kick. And he nailed this one. From 30 yards out. The orange on the board. 8.47 to go here in the second quarter. It's 14-3 Temple. The underdog against Ray Lamb made a terrific play. And it kept Syracuse from getting a touchdown. Made him sell for the field goal. And they're pretty happy on that Temple sideline. 14-3. Owls over the orange here at Lincoln Financial Field in South Philadelphia. Going to get us going here. Here by Malvern Prep in the Interacademic League. There we go. That's going deep into the end zone. As you know, Porter will keep it right there. Good decision. As with the wind, it was Carney getting now. No miss. Big East football from ESPN Plus next Saturday, beginning at noon Eastern. Walter Washington and the Temple Owls host Matthias Fioruka and the Boston College Eagles at BC versus Temple next Saturday at noon Eastern from ESPN Plus. Beautiful day here, 43 degrees. Wind chill at 35 miles, at 35 degrees with a uh, wind out of the north at about 14 miles per hour. And Walter Washington going right into that wind with 80 yards to go to move his team to a bigger lead. And let's see what Syracuse comes out with with this defensive series. Keep it on the ground. And the first carry this afternoon by Umar Ferguson, the junior from Silver Spring, Maryland. Averaging 5.2 yards per down. Now, Dave, I think for Syracuse to turn this momentum around, it has to start on defense. They're without Walter Gray as their top you know, running back, and they've had a lot of pressure put on that offense now without him. The defense has to answer, just like they did last week in, in certain parts of those games. They have to come back and make a stand and maybe make a turnover here defensively. Second down and nine at the 21. 
Jackson to the little breaker screen, gets it outside, picks up about four. Shooting through with a big pass. Halfback option, end around option. Throws it to Hoochie uh, Ebay, 51 yards. Got Temple inside the five, and Walter Washington was able to get it in. There's no good one. He caught the first touchdown. 24 yards from Washington, then at the 7.30 mark in the first quarter. Seems to me Walter's building on his afternoon uh, from last week against West Virginia, really throwing the football uh, on target. He's been very accurate this afternoon. Third down at five at the 25. Temple four for four converting so far. Here's Washington. No, not going to get it done. Maybe a game of two. The bobble really messed up the timing there. He did well to get back to the line of scrimmage. It looked like a low snap really hurt the timing of this play. Down around his ankles, Walter did an excellent job, as you said, just to catch the football and make a positive play. It could have been a fumble or a, a bobble off the snap. Good, good hands by Walter Washington. Tony Jenkins made that play as we look at Jake Hendy. Junior out of Sandy, Utah. First punt today. And he had to kick it into the wind. Look what the wind did to him. And the hang time of only 2 9. But the carried mid, barely 30 yards. Ball start. Number 34 in the offense. Five yard penalty. Remains fourth down. Well, Syracuse is going to get excellent field position. You see, as you pointed out, Dave, that win, what it did to the football. They backed the Owl special team up another five yards. So Syracuse should get this football on the Owl side of the 50. That's what Indy has done to this point. Clayton is back to receive. Sophomore from Tallahassee, Florida. This one about the same deal. Hey, Bob, the Temple's got a chance. Temple has recovered. So the fact that it was a long line drive, dying quickly, works to Temple's advantage. What a break. Marcus Clayton can't believe it. Usually, when they, if a ball is dying like that and, you, and it's coming down, you just have get to get away. It. Either get away or, or just fair catch it. Yeah, fair catch it. He thought maybe he could get a run and have a running start and do something with it. He should have just let it go. Yeah, it looked like the air was let out of the football, the wind knocking it down. It really never got underneath the football, right? It never really got in good position to, to field the punt. Temple from its own 48. Going right after Syracuse. They get it out to Ferguson on a quick square out. Picks up about seven. Run out of bounds by Kellen Pruitt. Here's Julian Pollard trying to shake off. He had an excellent game uh, against Pittsburgh last week, pursuing Tyler Palco as well as Ryan LaCase, the other defensive end with James Weiss. A lot of pressure uh, from the Syracuse front four. Steve Dunlop, the D coordinator for Syracuse, says that Pollard's the hardest working kid on the team. There's Ryan LaCase, he's in there. He'll be at the other side opposite James Weiss. Ferguson took the ball and kept going. And picked up the first down for Temple to the 40-yard line. Quick pop over the right guard, Stephen Bell over there. Al's lead at 14 to 3. Orange getting on the board with a 30-yard field goal by Barber. 8.47 to go in the second. Right now with 6.40 and counting here in the second. So I look at Clayton with a big fumble. And that's keeping Syracuse, keeping Syracuse defense on the on the field. Here's Washington. Boy, just rampaging. He's got a first down inside the 30 to the 28-yard line. Boy, that fake holds just enough. He picks up 12, but next thing you know, he's around the edge and gone. And he's gone. And a great job by Christian Dunbar, 46, the tight end, who gets the block on the linebacker who has to just have one arm. Calvin Smith cannot bring down Walter Washington with one arm. Top of your screen. Just a good job of a creating a stalemate so Walter Washington could cut off the block and no hesitation when he's going north and south, Dave. Absolutely not. Ferguson going right side. Picks up positive yardage. That fair hug. He got to the other side. Weiss was there with Smith. Anthony Smith. 
Smith coming up to make the play. Here's what Washington's done to this point. 109 yards in total offense. He's fourth in the conference in total offense with 269-4 per game. Yeah, he's a very solid quarterback and take, can take that amount of uh, hits in a game and keep going. He doesn't really lose his level of explosiveness as the game goes on. One magazine and a preseason best athlete in the Big East Conference. He's rushed 7 for 42 and a touchdown already. Looking to throw over here. Boy, he ran into traffic. He bounces out. How'd he do that? Kellen Pruitt takes a ride, and Washington close the first down yard. It should be about a, it's like about a half yard short. I'll tell you how he did it. He looks like one of the linemen. You can't tell he's the quarterback. <laughs> He's 6'2", 240 pounds, and he gets blended in with that offensive line. You figure, well, he can't possibly have the football, and he breaks it out to the outside and makes a nice run. Like he ran right into traffic, and next thing you know, he, he, he breaks was, out. He was off to the races. And this is his territory, third and short. You know, you want to give it to him and, and just get a little push from that offensive line, and it should be enough. Fast moving first half. Bobble back, look at that, he's got the first down and more, he's going to score! Touchdown! The Bobble! And took the lead to 20 to 3! What an athletic play! 18 yard run by Walter Washington! Tremendous concentration by Walter Washington just to catch the football. He was just trying to get the first down. All he did was lower the shoulder, and all of a sudden he was through the line of scrimmage into the secondary. No one there to tackle him, and Bobby Wallace's team is looking to go up 21-3. to And they do with the point after. Great block by John Gross. Gross won his battle. That was the last block that Washington needed. His 14th rushing touchdown today. And there's some serious concern in Central New York right now. Those who are watching in Philadelphia, they can't believe it. Oh, the joy of a big-time quarterback having an outstanding day. 21-3, Temple leading at home against Syracuse. Walter Washington has thrown for one and run for two. And Bobby Wallace's club trying to knock off Syracuse for the second time in a row here in Philly. They did it back in 2 And right now with a big lead at 21-3. Here's Lux with the kick. Knuckleball going far side. It goes out of bounds. Boston College handling West Virginia at Mountaineer Field. Boston College at 2-1 and one in Big East play. West Virginia 4-0. and oh. Kick off out of bounds, untouched by the kicking team. Here's Ball why, placed at the 35-yard line. Here's why today's game is so important. As we talked about at the beginning of the game, Syracuse had a wide open, not wide open, but it's still a chance to win the Big East Conference. And with West Virginia losing, that was part of the equation yeah. that helps them. That's right. Because Syracuse will have a week off and then play at Boston College. But Syracuse not holding up its end of the bargain to this point. Pump fake Patterson. They flush it. He's in trouble. Down he goes at the 28 yard line. That's a loss of seven. Dave, this is the worst case scenario for the Syracuse Orange because they cannot rely on their passing game to get them back in the game. They have to use the, the, the three quarters, which are remaining of the three and a half, or two and a half quarters that are left to run the football and just run their offense. But if they get into this you know, throw on first down style of offense, they will not win this football game. Syracuse fifth in passing in the Big East, third in rushing behind West Virginia and Syracuse. They're asking a lot of Mr. Patterson to try to win it. This is what they're familiar with and what they've been successful with. Rowan almost gets the first down. It was second and 17. He picked up 16. Well, that's the home run threat right there. And he wears number one, Damian Rhodes. He can make a difference and he can make a, uh, make you pay, especially in the running game. Look at that huge hole, terrific block on the right side. It looked like Ojanaka and Steve Franklin to that side. Humongous hole off the right side. All Ryan Wallace can do is chase down Damian Rhodes. Third down, a very short one. Diamond Ferry in there, and wishbone. And Ferry gets the call and bounces it out. Let's see, it turns the corner. He's the football player indeed, Diamond Ferry. First down, Orange. They get it all the way down to the 24-yard line. 
Well, that's the one shit we can see a lot of Diamond Ferry in short yardage situation. A 30-yard gain by Diamond Ferry, who was a, he came to Syracuse as a running back and then moved over to DB a couple of years ago. Yeah, the former running back turned free safety, now turned running back in short yardage, bounces it outside. Just terrific vision. He kept his legs going. And we talked to Paul Pasqualoni. He said he's just a football player. He does everything we ask of him on defense. Now he does it in a special uh, short yardage situation. Scouts have noticed too. They said, what is going on here? This kid does a lot. Here's Rhodes. Taken out from behind by Mendenhall. And Rhodes picks up about three. Ran a long way to pick up three. Didn't have a lot, a lot of operating room. And Diamond Ferry makes all kinds of plays. You name it, he does it. Well, they, this is what I meant a couple minutes ago where, about the Orange offensively. They cannot lose their identity of who they are. Even though they're down by a significant score in 21-3, to they have to continue to run the football because that's who they are. Patterson gets it back to Rhodes. He's the block from the fullback, but a better defensive play by the out safety, Sadiq Conte. Fourth leading tackler of the ball club. 6'1", 215 out of the Mexico Military Institute with the El Dorado High School in Albuquerque. How about that show of speed and strength on the outside? That was very impressive. Got off that block by Evans. Good job of shedding the block by Conti and just using the right arm to pull Damian Rhodes down from behind. They're going to go empty backfield. Trips top of your screen. Inside two minutes to go here in the second. Five of eight on third down conversions for the Orange. Four-man rush. Not down the middle. Almost had the pick. He took a step in and then stood straight up and knocked it down. Mike Mendenhall having an outstanding game. And they may have to go for this, Dave, on fourth down. And the kicking game has been woeful for Syracuse. Well, you called it. What an absolute spectacular defensive play and almost interception by Mike Mendenhall. And, and Syracuse had numbers on the outside. Temple had too many guys committed to the box, that front seven box, and they didn't have enough to defend the trips to the wide side of the field. And if Mendenhall doesn't get a hand on it, could have been a big play for the Orange. Mendenhall could not get any run as a tight end. Played tight end a couple of years ago, so they asked him, he said, hey, can you put on a little bit of weight, play a little bit of line? It's 235, got himself up to 250, and he's had an outstanding year. Coming up at halftime, he's halftime report with Mike Gleason. Take a look at the uh, postseason preview. Look at top 25 and Biggie scores and first half highlights and stats. And right now, we did heavily on the Temple side of things. We, you mentioned Mike Mendenhall. About a month ago, we heard for the Pittsburgh game. He had four, five, six humongous plays in that game to put Temple in position to win that game. They, unfortunately for them, they didn't come up with it, but Mike Mendenhall gave a terrific effort to Bobby Wallace and his teammates on that afternoon. Mendenhall's a junior nearby Paulsboro High School, Gippstown, New Jersey. So the uh, orange kicking game, not what it used to be. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. The Orange on the season, 3 of 8. However, Temple, how about Temple? They've allowed 8 of 11 fourth down conversions on the season. Fourth and four at the 18. Patterson, roll. Looking for the throwback. Is he going to run? He does. Oh, he didn't make it. I don't think so. He didn't make it. He's going to be about half a ball short. He had to get across the 15. He didn't do it. Based on the spot that I saw the linesman put his foot down, I don't think he made it. David, it looked like his body went, uh, you know, east and west instead of north and south. He got turned going sideways, and if his body lands going towards the goal line, he would have had the first down. Look at the orange. They're walking up the yeah, field. Yeah, they, they know it. didn't make it. They pull a chain. Oh, he's well short. First down, Temple. The Owls of Hell. The old line, you can see it. They started heading for the sideline. They knew he did not make it. So you got a buck 40 to go, and you're going into the wind. So right now, if you're Bobby Wallace, you just want to get Walter, out. Walter Washington is telling him to hold on to the football. I think Perry Patterson did an excellent job. Great effort of trying to get the first down. But watch when you see his body get turned sideways. He never really got going towards the goal line when he got close to the 15. He did something we see so many backs. He had, if he goes straight line as he made he that last it. decision, he makes it easily and tried to make it into a bigger play than what was there. You see it all the time every week. Oh, this breaks. Right to the outside. 
Barry. Who makes the play? Oh, Mr. Barry. Barry. Tyson Barry. He's outstanding. If he's not one of your favorite players, he's a co-defensive player of the week this week in the Big East with Brian Sola of Boston College. Twelve tackles a week ago. Skin solos. Forced to fumble. He was, he's just unbelievable. Well, last week against Pittsburgh, 12 tackles, 10 of those solo, forced a fumble. He's the co-leader with 75 total tackles. You could almost close your eyes when you, and just listen to the sound. And he made the big play that stopped Pitt on fourth and inches. They try to run wide again to the other side with Brown. Inside a minute to go. Third down and short. Kind of surprised maybe Syracuse not calling a timeout here. No question. Going against the wind. You know, you, you have a stop on third down here. You might get the ball back with decent field position and at least maybe get an opportunity to score before halftime. Temple's up 21-3. Everyone more than happy to see the clock wind down. Third and one. Got to believe Mr. Washington's going to have carry the ball here, but they've already burned 20 some seconds off the clock. Didn't make it. Boy, they went to the back seven yards deep. Yeah, I didn't get it. I thought Washington absolutely. And now they call timeout with 21 left. Yeah, but they, they could have had about 30 or 40 seconds left Easily. on the clock. Easily. You know, in college football, you get the possession when you make a first down, the clock stops. So if you get this ball back with 40, 45 seconds left, it's like having an extra timeout already. So you could afford to burn another one defensively. Take a quick timeout, get back and see what happens in the final 21 seconds on the clock here in Philadelphia. Questions we have, Paul Pasqualoni did not call a timeout with about 50 seconds to go, but probably more over. Temple with a third and short. They go with a little guy to run the six foot two fifteen Umar Ferguson to run the ball and don't run it with Walter Washington. Yeah, that was a big question for me. Now they have, have a chance of a block kick or a return. Low line drive. And that's gonna burn some clock time right there. Don't touch it. 12, 10 seconds. Good job the state burned another three, four seconds off before they uh, play. They touch it. The hang time was only 2.4 seconds on a punt that went 34 yards. So now, just nine seconds on the clock for the Orange instead of about 29, probably, I would exactly. think. In that neighborhood, there was about 50. I thought they were going to call a timeout with about 52, 53 seconds to go. They had, yeah, close to 30 some seconds. But Temple just needs to make a play here, and they go to halftime up 21 3. Deep ball, and it's caught. Far side. And he got it into Jones with three seconds left. 18 yards on the pickup. It was a good throw. Yeah, it was a good throw. And it looked like to me today, Perry Patterson is having more difficulty throwing with the wind than he is against the wind. And this is the tougher side to make completions because the ball will sail on you a little bit. Probably the last play. See if they can get a big bend effort out of it. Patterson keeps it alive. Throws. Got people down there. Got a chance. Oh, so good. He got it out of bounds. Gregory had it. Boy, what an effort. And by Patterson and by Gregory. Temple dodges one there. Is anything easy for this Temple squad? Unbelievable. So that's the end of the first half here at Lincoln Financial Field in Philadelphia. Temple leads, Syracuse leaves at halftime with a timeout left on the board. The questions about clock management and play calling, they almost get a break here. Patterson, valiant effort, but Temple has a 21-3 lead at halftime. Mike Gleason's coming up next. It's halftime at Lincoln Financial Field. The Orange and Owls halfway through the weekend battle with a victory today. Temple cracks the win column in league play. A victory for Syracuse, and they become bowl eligible. Hi, everybody. Welcome to this weekend's Big East Halftime Report. Uh, Mike Leeson here, and thanks for spending part of your Saturday with us. Syracuse isn't the only school from the Big East on the brink of going bowling. Right now, West Virginia and BC are the only two schools that are bowl eligible, but keep in mind, three more schools can pick up their sixth victory today. 
The University of Pittsburgh is fourth in the Big East standings with a three and two conference record and five and three overall. The Panthers are coming off a heartbreaking double overtime loss to Syracuse last weekend. That game was important because it would have made Pitt bowl eligible if they could have pulled it off. Instead, the Panthers have two tough games to try to get there, facing Notre Dame this afternoon, and then number 10, West Virginia, on Thanksgiving night. With a win today and a win over the Mountaineers, the Panthers have a legitimate shot at gathering the BCS Bowl bid or could find themselves playing on New Year's Day in the Gator Bowl against the ACC's second-ranked team. Number 21, Boston College, checks in at number three in the Big East race with a 2-1 conference record and 6-2 record overall. The Eagles' 21-10 victory over Rutgers last weekend made it an impressive sixth straight season that they've been bowled out of the book. Senior quarterback Paul Peterson ran his record as a starter to 9-2 of the victory, going for 296 yards on the day. Boston College faces West Virginia this afternoon and a huge game for both programs. For the victory of the Mountaineers, the Eagles will tie for the conference lead and be in prime position to grab the BCS pin if they can finish out the season with wins over Temple and Syracuse. Syracuse pulled out a big win last Saturday in a double overtime victory over Pittsburgh. The win raised their conference record to 3-1 and, and put them a game over 500 overall at 5-4. and four. The Orange will look to Damian Rhodes to carry the load today after star running back Walter Reyes went down with a shoulder injury last week. Syracuse needs a win today to become bowl eligible. If they can run the table to end the season against Temple and Boston College, they'll have an outside chance at winning the conference. If not, they'll still have a good shot at getting a fit for the Gator, Insight, or Continental Tire Bowl. West Virginia is in the driver's seat to win the Big East and take the BCS for a bit as conference champs. But the Mountaineers still have some work to get there. WVU is battling a tough Boston College team this afternoon, looking to run the record of 5-0 in the conference and 9-1 overall. The Mountaineers have been doing it on the ground all year, leading the Big East in rushing offense by a whopping 88.4 yards a game. For the victory today, West Virginia will head north with a perfect conference record to take on Pittsburgh in the backyard ball on Thanksgiving night in a tremendously important game to end the season. But winning out in the last two games, the Mountaineers will wrap up the Big East title and a BCS bid. If they win one of two, they could possibly garner a Gator Bowl berth depending on the fate of the rest of the contenders. And keep in mind, with 28 bowls to fill, actually six of the seven teams from the Big East have a shot at tasting the postseason this year. One school we haven't mentioned, Rutgers. If the Scarlet Knights win out, they would join the postseason pack as far as schools earning bowl eligibility. But before we get too far ahead of ourselves, we move back to the present. And that means you're heading back to Lincoln Financial Field in Philadelphia for the second half of Syracuse. Here come the Orange, and they trail 21-3 here at Temple here at halftime at Big East Action. John Kinjemi, Dave Sims here. I don't know about you. I'm surprised. I'm a little surprised, and I'll be more surprised if Temple takes the opening kickoff of the second half and goes down and, and starts to control a little bit of the second half to start the game, you know, start the second half. Take a look at some of the first half highlights, and Walter Washington, what a day he's having. He hits Goodman right here to open the score from 24 yards out. Yeah, great pass. He was 4 of 5 on that drive for 55 yards, and did an excellent job, but then the 51-yarder, Chuku to eBay, down the field, first play of the second quarter, really opened things up for Temple, and that led to a one-yard rushing touchdown by Walter Washington. He gets the ball over the goal line, and that made it 14-0 Temple, but Syracuse comes right back. A great, uh, actually, they try to press it down the field, and Lamb makes an excellent play. He stretches out to oh. knock the football away. It looked like a great pass by Perry Patterson, but Syracuse has to settle for a field goal, a 30-yarder by Colin. Colin Barber that squeaks in to the inside. They had the ball for 12 plays, but then the huge error on the punt return. Marcus Clayton bobbles the football. Temple picks it up. And then your guy that's going to do it all on offense, Walter Washington, a 19-yard rushing touchdown. Six plays, 52 yards. They ate up two minutes and 27 seconds, and that led the score to 21-3. to And on that play, you saw Washington bobble the snap. Syracuse has some work to do. They did have one of their favorite sons on hand to uh, add to the uh, picture here and try to get them fired up. Donovan McNabb, the Eagles quarterback at Syracuse alum. We hope to have him with us in a matter of minutes as we get ready for the second half. 35 degrees on this 43 degree temperature day. 
Brendan Carney, local youngster from Valley Forge, Pennsylvania, has it teed up. Jamil Porter out of Rochester, New York. And here we go, second half action. Temple leading 21-3, and they'll take it from about a yard deep. Finds an alley, got to the edge. He can do some damage here. And he's taken down at the 33-yard line. And it's a good thing Dandre Whitfield, Thomas Whitfield, beg your pardon, was there. Temple in a good starting position here at the 34-yard line to get it going here in the second half. He found that crease. Yeah, he did. He found it to the left side. It looked like Porter was hesitant to come out of the end zone, but he made a wise decision. He found a crease and got it past the 30-yard line. Temple scored on its first two possessions, punted, scored on the third possession, and punted on the fifth. Washington on the draw. Does a heck of a job to use that hand to keep him up. And a late penalty flag thrown. And looks like Goodman, he got tied up with Tenard Jackson. We saw Goodman get in one of those real knucklehead penalties right here. I think he just got in another one, Dave. The play's over, and you go and cut somebody like that. Oh, That's a that bad play. Ridiculous. And, and, and there's no place for After that. After the play was over, personal foul, number one on the offense. 15-yard penalty from the end of the play it will be second down. The play is 40 yards away. What is he thinking about? Well, the, the worst part about it was you go and cut somebody like that. You know, that can, that can end somebody's career that way. I mean, it's all well and good if it's in the field of play and it's, a, you know, pertinent to the play. But away from the play, I just think that's a bad, a horrible decision by Phil Goodman. Got to get that macho, and this game's not macho enough. Well, and, and this is a situation for Bobby Wallace too. They're up 21 to three. Their offense comes out. Walter Washington just makes an excellent effort to get a few yards, and then somebody breaks down mentally. Amazing. Second down to 23. Washington. Well, he can just run through some tackles. If you don't hit him, you pay a price. And Walter Washington is very excited about that play. James Weiss had him for tackle for a loss. He ran right through him. And, and Weiss, James Weiss is an outstanding defender. Watch number 90 here, a little whip Ola. And watch the strength. And a good job on the outside by Christian Dunbar. That's the second time he's blocked really well. He made Smith and Walter Washington. Yeah, but Walter, Anthony Smith loses his footing. And Walter Washington made a productive play out of not much. And got it back to a productive third and nine at the 35. It's a killer if he gets the first down. And the tight end, Dunbar can't make the play. Covered by the linebacker, Kellen Pruitt. That could have been a killer if they'd gotten that first down after getting backed up on the personal foul. Well, that's what Walter Washington needed on that first series. Put a couple first downs together. They necessarily didn't have to score, but they wanted to get that field position because that wind is really picked up in this third quarter. Jake Hendy punts it. Bimbo signals for a fair catch and drops short. Kind of hang time of just over five seconds. That was pretty good. Put covered 40 yards. And that was into the wind, too. Terrific punt. Now it's up to Perry Patterson in this third quarter to try to put something together. And it all starts with the running game for Syracuse and Damian Rhodes. We talked about the loss of Walter Reyes. It all starts with this running game and a lot of pressure on Rhodes right now. Orange starting at its own 25. Yeah, they're not gonna, not gonna win doing that. They have to get back. They have two quarters of football left, 13-29 left to go. They have to get back to their own identity, try to use some formations, get a mismatches in the running game, and that'll open up the passing game. Syracuse in its first uh, half, and their possessions went punt, field goal, field goal, and then turned it over on downs, and then gave it up at the end of the half. Second down at 10, at the 25, toss play going to Rhodes. We broke it open, there he goes! And taken down from behind, Bobby Fulmore prevented further damage. First down, Syracuse, game of 17. And joining us right now, Syracuse alum and Philadelphia Eagles quarterback, Donovan McNabb. What's going on, Donovan? Oh, nothing much. How you guys doing? We're doing well, thank you. What did you tell the club at halftime? 
Hey, just a little more motivation, support him a little bit, and uh, try to rile him up a little bit. You know, here like Lincoln Financial Credit, it's a tough, tough team, but uh, there's still another half to play. So uh, if they focus in that way, things will be fine. Hang in there for we'll do this play here. First and ten at the 42. And Rhodes up the middle. Nice game. Picks up the top eight. What else could you notice? Uh, I was curious about your other observations about this Syracuse ball club. Well, I mean, you know, we've had some ups and downs this year, and uh, they played well versus, you know, some of the tough opponents, the opponents in which uh, no one thought we can even contest with. And, uh, you know, we've had some games, obviously, we won back, but the, the main thing is that they're a young team, and they're learning from this experience, and hopefully they help them out for the future. Tell us about your uh, McNabb's pals here. So you got a lot of youngsters here. We do, and, uh, you know, we try to uh, give kids an opportunity to come out and enjoy some good football, come here to Lincoln Financial, a place where obviously they, they visualize being here and just have a good time. Donovan, this is John Kajemi. Just wanted to talk a little bit about a position you know well and quarterback and Perry Patterson and his progression. It looks like he's really gaining some confidence week in and week out, especially last week. He, he really took the orange on to victory. Well, you know, you know, in this game in which we play, obviously, you know, it takes some time. You know, it can be perfect just with one particular game. And I think he's continued to grow in this offense uh, and have the comfort level around his guys. And the guys seem to have confidence of them in there that uh, they can make big plays. And that's a nice throw right there by his yeah, sure was. Nice play out to Jones. That picks up a first down at the 30-yard line again of 15. What about your ball club? A big one uh, Monday night against Dallas coming off the pounding you took at Pittsburgh. Give me, give me a feel. What kind of week was it here for you here in Philly? Well, for us, it's an exciting week. Uh, but for the people of Philadelphia, obviously, uh, you know, it feels like we're one in seven. But <laughs> yeah, I uh, noticed when I came in here. Oh, my goodness. But, you know, the thing for us is, uh, you know, we've been in this situation before, and we know how to get ourselves out of it. So uh, it was a relaxed week, but more of a serious business approach, and uh, we'll continue to get better. Rose is broken one. He's going to go. There's a late penalty flag coming in. Touchdown, Syracuse. Oh, no. Rose broke it for 30 yards, but it looks like it may be coming back. Well, that's the way things have been going for us yeah. this nope. year, and, uh, you know, I think we uh, we have some young guys and guys that, that we'll do begin to watch uh, later in the future and, and be very excited of watching. Donovan, thanks for your time. We appreciate it. And uh, we'll be watching Monday night, Eagles and the Cowboys. All right, there you go. Have fun. the rest of the way. Right, thank you, guys. Donovan McNabb, quarterback for the Philadelphia Eagles. And this touchdown run by Rhodes is brought back. We talked about the bad decision on the first set of downs for Temple and Phil Goodman. That time, a bad decision by one of the linemen looked down the field that was tangled with Ryan Wallace. And it looked like Damian Rhodes was already almost in the end zone, and the penalty was called. So not a happy sideline, and Paul Pascaloni wants answers. That's the worst when you take six off the board. That is just, that's terrible. But now they're backed up first and 20 at their own 40. Rhodes gets the carry again. And Rhodes, ooh, takes a big lick. But takes it down to the 31-yard line, gain of nine. Over here, Walter Reyes, out of action, shoulder problem. That hit by Tiz Morris in the hit last week, knocked him out of the game. He's out of today's game. There's a bye week next week, and then the week after that, they play Boston College to wrap up the regular season. And you see what it means to this offense, 800 yards, that's second in the Big East. And you lose a guy like Walter, you're not losing a guy that you know, carries a load for the football team. Rhodes 19 for a buck 16 on the rush. Here's number 20, and he's got folks in front of him. Oh, what a block by Terry! on the edge and it all that's all it took for Damian Rose to get to the outside. Terrific blocks at the point of attack. Adam Terry. Awesome devastating block. That is the way you run the toss sweep. Alan Barber on for the point after. He's 17 out of 18. 
points after this season, 104 for 110 for his career. Her senior out of Lexington, Kentucky. Jones puts down the snap, takes it through. Timeout on the field, 11-11 to go. And Rhodes with an impressive run. Aiden in a bet. Look at the block there. There's another one there. He's gone. Touchdown cues. I mean, if you're a draft pick, remember this name, Adam Terry. He will be among the first offensive tackles taken next April in the NFL draft. And Damian Rhodes talking about making an account for himself. 31 yards on the run. He's 5 for 69 on that drive. 20 for a buck 48 in the game. And he had a TD called back. And you heard the coaching staff. This is your game. They're going to feed them. And, and John goes back to your point. This is who they are. This is yeah. a running ball club. Don't lose your identity. You're you're a tough, physical Eastern team. Do not, you know, try to shorten the game by throwing the football. There's plenty of time left to get back in the corner. Turned inside by Clayton. And another fine return outside up to the 30. Took it to the 34-yard line to open up the second half. What a good-looking drive, and then look at the execution. Well, it all starts with Steve Gregory, the last guy in the line of scrimmage. Look at the pin, the linebacker to the inside, and then Terry on the outside, just a one-arm shiver. That's just a devastating block. And then also, Jason Green gets a hand on the last defensive back that can actually make the play on Damian Rhodes. But it all started with the wideout getting the edge for the lineman to get outside. And the guy that got one-arm shivered was Ryan Wallace. Yeah, I mean, he got pretty involved. There's nothing. Here's a slant play by Ferguson. Picks up good yard. It's about eight, nine yards to the 39-yard line. Yeah, I'd like to see a little more of Umar Ferguson in this second half because I think he can really change the pace for Walter Washington. You kind of, you know, give it to him once, give it to him twice, then Walter gets to the outside. I think he's a better north-south runner than Tim Brown. Tim Brown. Step back looking. To, to, he's a guy that, you know, he can slide and glide looking for the corner, but this guy, yeah, he's a good slant guy. Gets the ball again. And he turned the corner, does a nice job, he got the first down. He beat the attacker to the edge, Barry and Weish beat them to pick up the first down. And just to prove that I was wrong, Ferguson bounces it to the outside, shows you his speed. Temple open up a 7-0 lead in the first, the 24-yard pass. Washington and Goodman, and it was a good decision by Ferguson. Nothing there between the tackles, and he actually outran Diamond Ferry to the edge to get the first down, and on the day, five rushes, 22 yards. First and 10 from the 45 for the out. Well, that way over. Boy, he threw that with his arm. He didn't step into that one. Yeah, somebody put a pin in that balloon. That ball went everywhere. He teaches you to, I teach you to beg your pardon, was the intended receiver. Second touchdown, 14 nothing with the ball of Washington. Ball of Washington did a one-yard run. That was the Chuku to eBay halfback option that set it up. Orange got on the board. Barber a 30-yard field goal. Gregory had a 26-yard catch to highlight that drive. Washington a 19-yard run, 434 to go in the second, made it 21-3, and now here we are in the third Rhodes. A 31-yard run for the Orange, 21-10. Washington, oh, he had it and dropped it. Jamel Harris can't come up with the play. Had he caught it, it still would have been third down and about four. Yeah, but it, it gets into a Walter Washington type situation if he catches the football, Dave. You're exactly right. You know, you have to make plays like that. If you're going to win games, you, you go back to plays like that that stall drives. That would be one you would you would put a red mark next to. You needed to get a shorter conversion than third and ten. Temple sixth and third down conversion. He's having a good day today. On the season of 33 percent, Washington Bay got a man there bumping any flags. No, on the far side, battle in there. That was Bucci Ebay. And pretty good coverage down there by Marcus Clayton. Well, good set of downs for the Orange on defense. They come out and they put a stop to, to the running of Walter Washington and also the, the passing game of the Temple House. They do a good job defensively on their first two series. Bembo's back to get this punt from Hendy, averaging 35 yards on three punts. Ooh, he just got it off. Great hand time, win over it there, and the Faircats made it to the 25-yard line. Flag back up field. 
four five, four point five on the hang time on a punt that carried thirty yards. I think they're going to call a personal foul. Sure enough, there's a break for the Owls. Boy, if you're Syracuse, that's a killer. You get the ball back if you punch in for touchdown. It's a 21-17 ball game. Foul. Roughing the kicker, number 52 on the defense. 15-yard penalty for the line of scrimmage. First down. Jamil McLean called for the infraction. A killer. Well, it took an awful long time for the official to get that flag out. We didn't see one initially. We get a chance to see the replay. It wasn't touched. And he runs right into the leg. He looked like he tried to avoid. That was a pretty good acting job by the kicker. So Rhodes, about to bathe in that sunlight on this cold day here in Philadelphia. The Owls in pretty good shape now. Ball's inside the 40 of Syracuse. Wait. First and 10. Dave, I think they have to get back to the running of Walter Washington. They bring the safety up. And they run Ferguson right side. Kellen Pruitt brings him down. He's number three. Pruitt number 41 with help from Diamond Ferry. Even though there's 9, 48, 47 and counting in this game, it's still a possession game for the Temple Owls. They have to grind out that clock and get something on this drive. 21-10, Owls. They led 21-3 at halftime. Bobby Wallace's club. Trying to knock off the Syracuse Orange for the second time in a row. They knock off that one is crew here in 0-2. And Barber joined the next point off and up right. Going for it all. Goodman down there. And no, he did get a hand on it. Pretty good coverage. Very good coverage by Marcus Clayton. One of those plays that maybe if he had thrown it short and let him come back for it, he might have had a play. Yeah, you're right. You know, not a very good route by Phil Goodman on a go route. He started outside and never got on top of the cornerback. And that was an excellent play on the outside by Marcus Clayton. Good positioning. And oh, hey, look at this. Boston College all over West Virginia at halftime. We'll see BC here next week. It'll be the biggest finale for both clubs. Tech leading 7-0 over Connecticut. Goodman's got to be crazy with himself, too, because he's 6-3 going in at the 5-7 plate. We know he wants another piece of that action. Washington going to take it on the ground, and he's going to be short of a first down by about four or five yards. Well, if I'm Temple, I may go for this on fourth down. Saw Washington say, hey, let's do it. I don't think they have a, I don't think they can get enough boot into it on the field goal attempt, and I don't know if you want to waste a punt and maybe only gain 10 or 12 yards. You might want to go for it on fourth down. I think they're going to go for it. I think that's what they're going to do. Temple on the season, they've gone for it a bunch. They're second in the conference to West Virginia, 13 of 22, which is 59%. Fourth and two, Washington. There's a catch, and it's good for the first down. They got it to Jamel Harris, the sophomore from Shrewsbury, New Jersey. Yeah, you get that wide out on a linebacker, just a little option route to the outside in, in a little bit of space. Good throw by Walter Washington, and, and he, a redemption catch by Harris. He dropped the one on the near sideline. That time he had no choice but to catch that football. It was right there. <laughs> Syracuse starting the day. One half game, one game, Big Pardon, behind West Virginia. Syracuse with a chance with help to win the Big East title. But right now, this head will move the ball. Here's Ferguson. Great block. Probably going to be a hold as Ferguson breaks it back to the 10. I got a feeling it's going to be a hold on the wide out. Bucci Eban on the far side. He was stalemated at the 15-yard line, a gain of 18. Yeah, Dave, it's either him or it's on Harris on the inside slot receiver, but one of the wide receivers out there had too much white jersey for the officials to ignore. Boy, that was clear as day. I didn't even have to look at our monitor. I could see that naked eye on the far side. Holding <laughs> number 10 on the offense. 10-yard penalty to the spot of the foul. First down. And they saw Jamel Harris. But that was a, that was a multiple choice. You had Harris or you had eBay. <laughs> there was a lot of cloth between the two. And uh, choice C was William Penn. <laughs> well, you know, he gets into a situation where they just, you know, you convert a fourth down and they don't capitalize on their success offensively. There's a guy. He looks like he has a little cloth on yeah, yeah, the top of City Hall here. That's one of the high, it used to be the highest point in Philadelphia. Top of Billy Penn's hat. First and 
19 at the 30. Washington's got it. Look at that. That's got to be scary. It's a good thing Smith was over there because that was six. Gain of 12. And again, you, you talked about it, establishing Ferguson set it up. Oh, absolutely. You have to do that. But look at Walter Washington elude. I'm so impressed with how big he is. And watch his legs get up in the air and elude arm tackles. And then he just runs through, almost runs through the last tackle to the end zone. He's very deft on his feet. 13 carries, 100 yards, two touchdowns, rushing for Walter Washington. Ferguson stood up. But he picks up the first down, Jerry Mackey. Fourth and tackles on the ball club for the linebacker. Nephew of former Syracuse great John Mackey, the Hall of Famer. That's a first down for the Owls. So that fourth down conversion looming large here. Syracuse down 21-10 here to Temple. Pot running at 6.40 to go here in the third. Just chewing up all kinds of time here. Well, Bobby Wallace and that offensive staff would really love for his offense right now to grow up and learn how to win a game and put one out of reach, and they could do it right here. Al's having one of the biggest game since the 02 season. They're going for Goodman. He made the catch, but he's out of bounds. Again, there's that height advantage over Clayton. It's no contest. Goodman at 6 foot 3 like a basketball rebound. He just goes in, posts them up, and uses his body. Great call. No chance. Great call, but helping the defense was the win, Dave. That ball sailed and kept going towards the sideline. You see Goodman trying to get his uh, a, a visual on the ball to try to go up and get it, but the ball kept going and drifting out of bounds, and that's something you might see again, but Walter Washington may get the fake inside and run it himself here on second down. Give it to Ferguson about three. And Thorner, Pruitt, and Weiss here on the tackle for Syracuse. Well, Dave, it would be like putting a band-aid on a, on a cut right now if you kick a field goal. You want to go in and get and get six points if you're Temple, and you have to because that leaves the door wide open for Syracuse if you kick a field goal. If you're, if you're Temple side, they have a terrific drive going, aided by a penalty, 13 plays, 57 yards. They're eating up huge amount of time on the clock. You need six, not three. Third and six at the 11 for the Owls. They're going for Goodman. He's there. Fabulous look of opportunities to get a touchdown. It's a dribble kick that goes to Kellen Pruitt. And Pruitt will go out of bounds. Well, Phil Goodman knows he's got a good thing going here. It's a great effort right here. Well, the first time they tried to get the football to him, they drifted out of bounds. So he took a look at the sideline and said, hey, let's do that again. I can get him on the outside. And you want to give him another chance because he has the size on the outside. He has the football here, but Diamond Perry gets his right arm on the football and strips it away. Here's Rhodes on the sweep. Terry got another big clean out block. And big yardage again for the Al. Adam Terry wiped out the corner. Bobby Fulmore. Adam Terry can really run. I mean, if he gets that cleanly, it's over. Oh, yeah. He's a terrific guy, and he's got great feet for a big body, 6'9", 324. And let me tell you what it did for Syracuse's offense. It gave Damian Rhodes a huge rest for Temple to go all that way, 16 plays and 58 yards, only to get three points. So Adam Terry, that offensive line is rested, but more importantly, Damian Rhodes is rested. 21 for 160, and a touchdown for Damian Rhodes. Play fake it, and they get it to the fullback. Brian Evans on the far side, he picks up a first down. Nicely done, eight of 11. That wind has an effect on that kicking game because Syracuse started with excellent field position. Now two offensive plays in its first and 10. Ball on the 41 yard line of Temple and they're they're trying to get back into this game and shorten the clock. Yeah, it's a place. Yeah, we got 
to the 41 yard line. 294 total offense for the Orange. Adding to that total now, Rhodes with that carry picks up five. Temple with 296. Total offense wise, both teams move the ball pretty well. Syracuse last in total offense in the conference, and Temple's fifth. Well, this is exactly what Syracuse wanted to do offensively, get a quick score, move the football down the field, not take a lot of time off the clock. Damian Rose, 22 rushes for 165 yards. Seven point. Wow, a pop. Looking for more here. It's been a bread and butter play at that time. A takedown. A couple of howls over there. Mendenhall for one and Fulmore the other. Yeah, Chris Fulmore's hurt. Fulmore gave up his body. He kind of went in very awkwardly to try to take out one of the lead blockers, and I don't blame him. Looks like he hurt his, possibly his leg, but he went in there with reckless abandon. Time out on the field as they attend to Fulmore. Fulmore's a junior, six foot two hundred. Out of Rochester, New York, with the Erie Community College before coming to Temple. Let's see, there's Fulmore 15, and then Mendenhall fell on something. Maybe it's just the impact. But that's how he's down there right now. But Syracuse in this possession, I mean, they give up the field goal and bing, 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 here they are in Temple territory knocking on the door at the 35. Well, Syracuse needs to score quickly here and get the ball back because in the fourth quarter, they're going to be going against a very stiff win. And with the problems in the kicking game, they're going to have to get inside the 20 to even have opportunities to score through special teams. So they're going to have to get one here quickly and then try to get field position back for their offense. Looking at a third and fourth to 35, the Orange 5 of 9 converting today. This play already, four plays, 29 yards and 106. Toss play, Rhodes. Ooh, who gave up their body there? What a play. Did you see that? Jermaine Hargraves came up. Boy, he was slamming on that one. Terrific play. You have to be tough, you know, I, you don't get a lot of size at the cornerback position, but you have to have to be a tough football player, and that's exactly what Hargrave shows you on this play, just giving up his body right there, going under the block of Breon Evans, and that'll force Syracuse on fourth down to go for it. Good play. He made the tackle. Yeah, great play. That's terrific performance. A 0 for 1 on third down. It's fourth and three at the 34. Play fake. Patterson in trouble. Running around. Patterson a big play. When we talked to Donovan McNabb, that looked a little bit like Donovan McNabb. Great play by Perry Patterson. He kept the play alive. A.J. Lindsay doesn't have the foot speed to keep up with Patterson. Then he just throws a nice touch pass to Joe Kovaleski. I've done this play before. Rose went air for Oh, man. Don't hit the price. There's Donovan. Let me know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay. Yeah, all right. <laughs> He'll bump into Dreads tomorrow. <laughs> Get ready for the flight down to Dallas. Boy, going airborne. Like Rose Not a good idea. I think that goes into the category. I don't know if I'd have done that. That's yes, exactly right. Second down. Toss play. They got it blocked on the edge. Real well. Might be a hole. He's in for touchdown. No flags. No flags. Touchdown orange. 16 yards on the run. That was beautifully blocked. Run Graves, though, is pleading in case that he got held. That's what I saw late. He's even pointing to the line judge. Look at a big board. I know. I think he might have a case, but as you said, no late flag. And Jermaine Hargraves upset on the play. He thought he was held, but great execution by Syracuse. Just Damian Rose walks in on the 16-yard touchdown on his second of the day. That was out of the party school because everybody's block was key and everybody executed. Here's Barber for the point after. With a quick striking drive. 
Barber's point after is good, and we got a ball game. It's 24-17 Temple over Syracuse, 2.31 to go here in the third quarter. And Donovan McNabb, they may want to record what he had to say at halftime and use it again later on this season. 17 Temple. And here come the Orange. The Orange, if you've seen the Rhodes go 26 carries for Buck 86, two rushing touchdowns. In lieu of the absence of Walter Reyes, leading rusher on the ball club, out with the shoulder injury. They hope to have him back in two weeks for the season, regular season finale against Boston College. Brendan Kearney has it teed up. Porter's deep to receive. Porter has gotten it past the 30, the last two kick returns. As if they kick away from him. They kick it right to him again. Drive him a yard deep in the end, he'll have to sit on that one. He'll take a knee. Temple will start at its own 20. Very important drive here by the Owls. They need to get out and get a touchdown. If not, if they don't get a touchdown, Temple and Syracuse will get the ball with an opportunity to tie the game up. And let's take a look at our Monday full facts about the Owl of Temple. It is a night school, symbol of Athena, goddess of arts and skills and even warfare. Don't mess around. If some of those Owls on offense need some skill right now to heat up two minutes and 31 seconds so they can get advantage, take advantage of the win. Washington will take it. They were waiting for him. They were waiting for him. Nothing there. As Syracuse stands strong. Lee Williams in there. Ryan LaCasse as well. Yeah, the reason I mentioned the win, Dave, is because field position is so important now. The one possession score it at 24 or 17 they need to kick the football with this win if they have to punt it away meaning temple needs to get one first down on this drive temple had a 21-3 lead now 24 17 second down washington all day throws over the middle and he's got Uchi ebay and ebay fights his way to the 26 Uchi out of east orange new jersey with the hudson valley community college to come to Temple. We talked with Steve Dunlap a lot throughout the year, and he, he's trying to coach his guys on defense for Syracuse to tackle the football. Now would be an excellent time to try to tackle the football. Looked like on that second down reception, they were going at the football. Clock running, 122 and Kelly here in the third. Syracuse with a couple of touchdowns here in the third quarter. Opens up here for Washington. First down and more. Takes two guys to bring him down at the 40-yard line. First down out. Smith, along with Troy Swittenberg, make the tackle. 14-yard run by Washington. A very important first down for Walter Washington. When it's crunch time, you go to your guy. And who didn't stay at home was Ryan LaCase, the number 94 on the right side for Syracuse. He took the bait down with the fake on the inside, and he didn't stay at home, and that left it. All Walter needs is a step, and he gets to the outside and moves the chains. Inside a minute to play in the third. From the 40, a first down for the outs. Overload the top of your screen, Washington. He's flushed. And taken out from behind. The tackle for a loss by Tony Jenkins. Tony, number 51, a true freshman out of Springfield, Virginia. And a very impressive spring. He's done a nice job for him on that D line this year. Yeah, he had a nice game last week against Pittsburgh. A couple big plays. And haven't mentioned Tony's name much much today for Syracuse defensively, but it comes up big there on first down. See if they get one more playoff before the end of the quarter. Got a one second differential play clock and game clock. Second down and 11. Got the good one. Goodness, Tester's got a man to beat. Nice move by Goodman. Can he hold on to the ball? He doubles up. He does a good job to the 16-yard line. 15-yard line. A big play for the Owls. And that'll do it for the third quarter. A gain of 46 yards to Phil Goodman. So Goodman with a big play right here. Temple with a touchdown lead, trying to extend it to two as we head to the fourth quarter. Goodman abusing Clayton all day, and he gets him for 46. 
Well, the big question, Temple winless in the Big East season so far. Could they get the emotion and the execution going against Syracuse? And so far, they have done it, leading by as much as 21-3. to three. They want to run some plays. They know they can do some things against Syracuse, and they're this close. Well, they're 15 minutes away right now, and they lead it 24-17 as we begin the fourth quarter here at Lincoln Financial Field. Dave Sims and John Kinjemi with you. Time of possession this afternoon. The Owls with the advantage. 24 minutes and change to 20 minutes and change. For the orange, a 46-yard pass play to Goodman set up this possession right here. And look at Walter Washington. Positive yardage again inside the 10 to about the 8-yard line. Picked up about 7. Boy, he's murdered to bring down. You know, Dave, the weird thing about it is you know it's coming. You know, in, in this season, total yards, Walter Washington, 26 69. That's the set the Temple record for total offense in a season. And the former record was by Henry Burris in 94. And you know it's coming. And he just keeps going downhill. And Diamond Ferry gets him down to the ground, but not after positive yardage. 17 for a buck 20. Two touchdowns on the ground today for Washington. There's the little guy Brown inside the five. He's got the first down to the four. Tim Brown, there was a Tim Brown that played here with the Eagles back in the early 60s, and what a player he was. Out of Ball State, West Virginia, no contest at West Virginia. No gunpowder today. Somebody must have wet it down. Huh? <laughs> no. Connecticut on the short end on the road at Georgia Tech in a non-conference game. Right here, Syracuse down a touchdown. Here's Washington. He did. The 17 Temple. A 50-yard run by Washington. His third running touchdown today. And no, I'm not giving it to you. Yeah, right away. <laughs> this is my touchdown. His eyes got huge. Goodman's 46-yard catch. Had him knocking on the door. They got through. Well, now Syracuse going against this win. 14-01 left to go in the game. Down 31-17. Temple now, you can bet, they'll start ball hawking big time. Diamond Perry, knowing that the wind is against the kicker, Lutz, he moves up. He can move up even further, makes the catch at about the 14 yard line. And pretty good coverage over there. By Andrew Turner to get him out of bounds. Walter Washington, 10 of 18, 130 and a touchdown. And then look at the running game, 18 for a buck and a quarter. He's something special. He is something special, and, and he's so durable. He's so strong. Between the tackles, you can't bring him down. So he had the shoulder problem. Yukon, he hurt his right shoulder. Didn't practice all week last week. His first attempt was an interception, but then he came back and played the best offensive game of the season. The gash there by Rhodes as he gets into the 35-yard line. A.J. Lindsay made the tackle. Good blocking in there by Matt Chirula. Single season record matching the number put up by Paul Palmer in 1986. 
Temple with a touchdown advantage. And right up the middle again. Bumble. How about this? How about this? Temple's recovered. Well, Paul Baskerelli was getting heat in Syracuse in the last couple of weeks. Darrell Davis didn't make the picture any prettier here. got to put a damper on Syracuse and you give the football to the fullback and he goes up the middle terrific downhill tackle by Rodney Wormley it looked like Wormley was the first guy on him coming from the side oh there it was the punch out yep, yeah first guy got him yeah Wormley got him on the first on the punch out two turnovers on the day for Syracuse none for Temple good in the top of your screen nobody guarding him Washington will keep it on the ground He's just, it's like a bowling ball. Here comes the sledgehammer, and right now Temple has the hammer in their hand. If they want to knock out Punch, here it is with 13.05 left to go. It's Walter Washington. They broke the huddle. There was nobody on Goodman, and the defense was still scrambling to get out there. He had looked up, he had a freebie. <laughs> They're going to run. I bet they run the same kind of thing. Let's see if they try to get it to Goodman. Got the height advantage. Ferguson taken down by Thorner. Ferguson doesn't have that golf kind of thing. He doesn't have that. So that wasn't his kind of play. Biggie's football, an upset in the making here in Philadelphia. Lincoln Financial Field, along with John Congemi. I'm Dave Sims and our ESPN Plus crew. It's been Temple from the get-go, folks. Look at that. Turnovers, 2-0. Temple with the advantage there. Paul Pasquale's club was down 14 nothing early second quarter. They fought back to make it 24-17 late third. But Temple just put up another score, an eight-play 80-yard drive in 3:30. Goodman a 46-yard catch and Walter Washington a four-yard TD run. Temple a football length short of that first down on second down. Wide side of the field to the far side. Let's see how much of a gambler Bobby Wallace and Dave Brock are. Well, I think Bobby Wallace is going to, you know, it, it's a great situation. You, we just talked about it. You suggesting to me that play action and go up on top. But I think they're going to keep this clock moving. Yep. And Walter Washington's going to dive ahead for this first down. Or attempt to, at least. Oh. He probably oh. sure did. He never had it. He never had it. has the football, but now where do they spot the football? Kristen Dunbar, the tight end. What's the... <laughs> there's no way, there's no possible way, Dave, they can have an accurate okay. spotting of this football. The ball went forward in the pile. Look at 46. Dunbar, Dunbar right there. Like, yeah. He's going, it's, it's Easter come early. He gets the uh, Easter egg out there and says, I'm going to go home. <laughs> Just, hey, boys, I got the football over here. <laughs> That's hilarious. And they don't get the first down. Inches. Well, you have to go. You have to go for it. No question. Have to go. Not for even it. a hesitation. But you got to get the snap. I mean, Washington. If he just gets the ball, he he probably pulled out to see the blue ball. The center pushed out too quickly. Right. Thirty-one seventeen. Early in the fourth here in Philadelphia. Converted their only fourth down attempt today. Hey, what a party group of fans on the near side here, mainly Temple fans, Syracuse fans on the far side in this gorgeous facility. I'd go off the guard or off the tackle a little bit instead of going straight over the center. Good shot by Ferguson. He got the first down. Tackle by Diamond Perry. Picked up the first down. Temple trying to knock off Paul Pasqualoni and Syracuse for the second consecutive time here in Philadelphia. 17-16 at the vet two years ago. 
Bobby Wallace, that was his only win in six games against Syracuse. Dave, I'd be very surprised if they throw the football in this situation. I think you want to eat the clock up and run the football. Run blitz coming. Ferguson sticks his nose in there, picks up a couple. Kellen Pruitt, Chris Storner make the stop for Syracuse. job on first down trying to tackle the football to try to force a turnover but there's nothing they can do if Walter Washington continues to move the pile and I would think he would carry it on second down. 11 carries 35 yards for Ferguson today. Washington closing in on 200 yards got 134 20 uh, 19 carries prior to that one. Got a couple of players separated. Chuka, one of the DBs. Temple by two touchdowns as the clock continues to roll. Brings up a third down and six. And if, if you're Bobby Wallace on the Temple sideline, you want Walter Washington to move that 25 second clock and only snap the football with three, two, one seconds so they can use the allotted amount of time they have because right now Syracuse on first and second down doing an excellent job stopping the run. White clock winding down. Blitz coming. Going for Goodman. Can't make the catch. Guarded by Tenari Jackson. Goodman at six foot three. He got the first score of the game at 26, uh, 24 yard at the 7.30 mark in the first quarter. Well, good defensive stand by Syracuse when they needed it most. 10-28 left to go in this football game, and they give the football up on a fumble, and let's see if Temple can convert on three points or the defense can shut them out here on this series. 41-yard attempt. Lux is 0 for 1 from this distance on the season. Got plenty of leg on it. It is good! Ryan Lux for 41, his second of the day. He had hit from 28 earlier. And Temple extends the lead to 34 to 17. putting it on Syracuse today. The Owls, good operation here. Lux, but no doubt about her. He hammered it. And they've doubled up the Qs. Warner Washington's got a bad shoulder. They're taking a look at it. They heard it in the Connecticut game. The Syracuse fans, the Syracuse ball club, wish it was, yeah, it was it hurt on them. There's a little way to play. Jeez. What a game. Here's the Lux check. Very through his hands. Gonna bring it out. And the Perry. Running hard. Takes a couple of bring them down. Nice return to the 28-yard line. Does a good job. 30 yards on the return as the ball went into the end zone. Great effort by oh. Diamond Perry. That's an definite example of Paul Pascaloni telling us earlier in the week that's a football player on his team. Damian Rhodes has put up some terrific numbers filling in for Walter Reyes, but right now the Orange down by 17. Rhodes coming up on a 200-yard day. Right now, he's got a lot of room to work, and he's been a punishing runner, more of a punishing runner than I thought he would be. Patterson throwing into the wind. And it's knocked down. It should have been picked. It was Andrew Turner. The wind knocked that ball down. It was on course, and then the wind got a hold of it, intended for Steve Gregory. Boy, what a nice route by Steve Gregory to the outside, but as you said, Dave, that wind is vicious, and that ball in the last 10 yards just took a nosedive down to the ground. Gregory had his man turned around, but the timing and the wind really had a lot to do with the incompletion. 10 of 21, 128 passing. Right in the screen, the roads. And he's got folks in front. Got a room to run, first down. A heck of a play by Sadiq Conte, because that could have gone another 30 yards. Conte has made a few big ones today. Gain of 14 by Rhodes. Yeah, Sadiq's been around the football for Temple on defense, and he's had to be around the football, because in certain situations, he was the last line of defense. 
34-17 Temple over Syracuse, 948 and counting here in the fourth quarter. Syracuse going into a, about a 14 mile an hour win. There's a nice dart on the outside to Jones for a first down. Into Temple territory at the 42 yard line. Boy, great job of poise by Perry Patterson directing traffic. He wanted his flat receiver to get out of the way so he could get the football to Jared Jones, who looks a little bit banged up on the play, but good throw and good execution of the offense by Perry Patterson, the sophomore. Bryce Moss comes in to replace Jared Jones. First and 10, Syracuse at the Temple 43. Gregory in motion. And a run runs, and he's taken out from behind by Troy Bennett, the outside linebacker, the strong side linebacker. Senior out of Paulsboro, number 44. There's Troy. Wait, bench is 430, squat 610. Yeah, okay. This is not your Pappy's Temple Ball Club. I know they don't have a lot of wins to show for it this year, just one and eight. Boy, they have got significantly bigger over the last couple, three years. Second and six at the 39. Patterson out pattern. And that's good for first down. And he got it into Jones. So Jones being a gamer in there. Picks up 11. Yeah, had to take a play off. Looked like his legs were bothering him. Gets back in. And that's two consecutive throws by Patterson to the short side. And into this win, you don't want to go from one hash to the other sideline. You want to stay down the middle or on the short side of the field. And that's what Perry Patterson is doing right now. It's more effective into the win. We're talking about Temple's only win this year. 38-7 against Florida A&M here in Philadelphia. Patterson's numbers. 6 got all day. Throws underneath Rice Moss. Moss taken down at the 22. Get about four yards short of the first down. Gain of six. Four more. One goes in on the tackles. Syracuse, they're doing a good job. They don't have to go to the hurry up right now, but they're doing a nice job of getting in and out of the huddle and snapping the football and breaking down some plays, you know, with a lot of quickness. Second and three at the 21. Pump face, screen left side. Nice catch, Rhodes. He's got help. Cuts back in at the five. Oh, they're taking out with a good hard tackle by Sadiq Conte. It'll be first make that four more. And it'll be first and goal for the Orange inside the five at the three-yard line, a gain of 19. Well, a balancing act by Damian Rhodes. It looked like he came close to stepping out of bounds around the 15-yard line. A great catch. We'll get another look at it right there. He does not. He stays in bounds. Great job of knowing where you are on the football field. And now a timeout call. Personnel issues. Clay Temple did not get people in there. And D coordinator Raymond Monica is irate. And on the sideline, there's Ray in the great shirt with Bobby Wallace. They could not get the right people in. They got some people reeling as well. They'll need a blow. Timeout here at Lincoln Financial Field to go. 8 13 to go in a 34 17 Temple lead. 34 17 Temple. Syracuse with a first and goal at the three. Rhodes is the deep back. He'll get the carry. And he's in for the touchdown. Black down though, Dan. See if we get a hold. Rhodes with a three-yard touchdown. Makes it 34-23. That gives him 201 yards on the day. He's more than filled in for Walter Reyes. He sure is. Well-deserved rest. Great effort as he sticks the ball over the goal line. Conti on the tackle, but they can't keep Rhodes out of the end zone. And a terrific drive put together by Perry Patterson as you take a look at Walter Reyes on the sidelines. Who would love to be in there. Three touchdowns in the day for Rhodes. Here's Barber. Point after. It is good. 34-24. Temple over Syracuse. Rhodes having a day, huh? 201 yards and three touchdowns. Walter Reyes having, having to sit this one out with a shoulder problem. He had to sit out the West Virginia game with the flu. He and Rhodes are best friends and roommates. And 
Rhodes also has his suffers from asthma, so Rhodes was feeling uh, some of those flu symptoms in that West Virginia game, but yeah. he's now healthy. Time now to take a look at our Guinness game summary. And Walter Washington, big part of the huge part of the Temple story. He's done a great job offensively. Four touchdowns, 226 yards of total offense, but Damian Rhodes for Syracuse has answered it with 29 rushes for 200 yards and three touchdowns. The big thing is the turnover. Syracuse, two turnovers, and Temple's done a good job of protecting the football. Temple's last win in the Big East at Rutgers in 2002. Winless to this point, winless last year in conference play. with a 10-point lead. Let's see if they go for the onside kick. They kick it deep. Oh, through the leg. Not a good sign for Tim Brown. Is he going to get on it? He does. Oh, boy. Right through the five hole. Take a look at our game changing performance. It's brought to you by Pontiac in Walter Washington. You are in sub. Nice throw. Goodman for 24 yards out, folds over his guard for a touchdown there. The snap looked like it was just a little <laughs> Caught him by surprise, and look what happened. He takes it home for a score. There's another powerful run. And Walter Washington, you got a 10-point lead, 8 away to go. You're our offensive performer, game changer of the game. And here he goes again. I'll tell you what, he, he just dragged who was that? Diamond Perry for five yards. You see, it doesn't matter who it is. You know, it could be James Weiss, it could be Diamond Perry, it could be Anthony Smith. It doesn't matter how big you are, you're going to go for a ride. Most of the time, going towards the, the goal line, you're trying to defend. Remember when I saw Walter Washington in late August, and we were doing some work at Temple. And he came in, you know, I saw him coming down the hallway. I just thought it was a lineman. And we, then we went to the formal meeting. He said, yeah, right. we're watching the quarterback. I went, oh, my God. I mean, that guy is a rock. Yeah, I thought, yeah, I thought he was a linebacker. Yeah, because I'd never seen him in person before. I mean, I've seen him on tape. And, you know, at, at last year, I don't think we did. We didn't do Temple last year. No, it was, so uh, I had not really seen him in person. And, you know, he's... Okay, 6'2", 240, and that's no lie, and very deft with his feet, you know, and, and, and he's a guy that, he's got good speed, almost great speed, and the, the ability to just run through people. Remarkable. Hey, bench press is 475 pounds, sixth on the team, and how many coaches this year have we heard that, hey, he's bigger than half my defensive part. What, are you kidding me? Look at that, he just shed Brian LaCasse again. Nothing you can do. You, you really can't stop him. If he has a head of steam going, it's over. You're going to get, you're going to catch him and then ride for a couple of yards. Well, Syracuse, uh, Dave, now third down. They they finally do stop Temple a little bit on second down. There you go. You see that the arm tackle again, and then Smith gets taken for about a two yard ride. Six point three yards per touch. Brown, nicely through. That's a first down to the 42-yard line for Temple. That's where Syracuse needed to stop on third down. They have all three timeouts remaining, and there's 6:19 left to go in this game. They desperately needed to stop, and I know Paul Pascaloni knows how important that last play and that last little run by Tim Brown is. Syracuse came into today's game, the reality of the situation, and they're getting help from Boston College with uh, the storyline. Hey, Syracuse still had a chance. Look at him move here. Oh, man! Truett goes for a ride. Smith goes for a ride. It's going to be second down and short for Temple. The story was Syracuse mathematically still had an opportunity with help to win, to win the Big East Conference. And that is sliding down the drain right now. Under six to play and down ten. That last run looked like it was we were watching a merry-go-round. Everybody jump on and, and go for a ride. There's a look at the standing. Syracuse is only a game behind West Virginia, a team that wiped them out at Morgantown. But you figure with Boston College winning, and then Syracuse still has to finish out the regular season against Boston College. Well, this brings Pittsburgh right back into it because now 
that loss to Syracuse last week doesn't mean as much if they can run the table. Pittsburgh has uh, remaining what this West, West Virginia Notre Dame today and, right. and West Virginia. So in the conference play, in so conference so, play, so three and two. And then West Virginia losing. Yeah, so Pittsburgh they they have to beat West Virginia in the backyard brawl. Right. That would give them the tiebreaker head to head. Right. And they've beaten Boston College already. That's right. Washington. For about three or four, Diamond Ferry, the last thing he wanted to know, but number 11 was coming through that hole, and who got up quicker? Walter Washington and not Diamond Ferry. Yeah. Walter Washington, we talked about the, the afternoon that Damian Rhodes has had, but Walter Washington's done an outstanding job of running the football for his offense and really carrying the load. Everybody has to look for number 11 to make plays if they're going to have a chance to win football games, and it looks like he's made enough plays today to give them that opportunity. 26 for a buck 65 for Walter Washington. I'm laughing because I just feel so fortunate that I'm not a DP today. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's, it's a downhill slide, and, and he's the one with the hammer. Clock to five minutes, 23 seconds. Temple fans groaning. Let's take a look at the upcoming schedules of these two clubs, brought to you by Advanced Auto Parts for the best parts. People and price were ready in advance. Both teams have BC on the schedule. Bobby Wallace. Trying to get his first Big East win. The 4 campaign, the last Big East season for the Cup Loud. Head to head contact there, Washington, against Anthony Smith. Smitty and Perry got to be saying, hey man, somebody else. <laughs> somebody in D Lock got to do me. I've been giving it to Tim Brown a couple times. <laughs> we can handle him. No, Even my though man, Tim's I got, had some good runs, but that's a hammer. That's a sledgehammer coming in. My man, I got a plan. You want to see the line? You get in there trying to stop the guy with the ball, number 11. I'm telling you, he is just relentless. Well, now, if you're Syracuse on this third down, you have to think about taking a timeout, possibly, and using one of the three they have if they can get a stop. They're beating the clock to death, too. Bobble there by Washington. Barely got him on the ground. James Weiss with the stop. That sets up a fourth and short here. And that'll bring on the front foot. With your tempo right now, you want to take the five-yard penalty. You have the wind at your back. You want to let that play clock run all the way down to double zeros and take the five-yard penalty and then, uh, you know, go ahead and, and try to punt on fourth down. Play clock at five. If they do take the penalty, they don't. Boy, how about the block by short Ball taking a tempo hop. Rolls to the 15-yard line. 4.2 on the hang time. And that punt covered 28 yards. To take a timeout. Walter Washington has done a season's work today. It's unbelievable. Ten-point lead by Temple. Killer. Good luck at Philadelphia from the Camden side of things. It's been all Temple today. That's no lie, no exaggeration. 34-24. They're at 14-0 early. Led by as many as 21-3. And here's Syracuse throwing into the wind. Oh! Johnson, a junior from Camp Hill, Pennsylvania, number 90, had the opportunity and couldn't come up with it. Wow, this one was up for grabs, Dave. Perry Patterson making a bad decision. If it's covered, throw the football away, but don't throw it into a crowd. There's two defenders there. Lucky it wasn't picked up. Patterson, there's a football play by Sadiq Conte. He has been laying wood all day. Oh, good hit. You can feel that one up here, Dave. Yeah. And you mentioned that Sadiq has made two, three, four different plays on, uh, on on receivers and running backs and quarterbacks. He's been all over the football field. 
Third down and two. Patterson. And he completes the first down. Jared Jones in front of Wayne Lamb in Pittsburgh. On the short end right now, early on at Notre Dame, 7 0. Notre Dame, factory in that BCS situation. Patterson all day. Run off the back foot. Ball's up in the air. Oh, boy. A couple of opportunities there. Went play for a long time. Credit Perry Patterson for keeping that play alive. He, he did it within the pocket, and he, he, his feet are very good today of eluding people and buying some time. Almost it goes off of Bimbo 7 and off of two Owl defenders and almost into the arms of Fontenet. Come on! Syracuse Nick would certainly love to get a break like that. Yeah, 3 on one to go down 10. Your tempo, you want to, no big plays here over 10 or 15 yards. You have to keep every, everything in front of you. Nothing on the screen. Going deep, and he's got some set blocks in there. Oh, he's dropped it. had it. That would have been probably his biggest play of his career. He had a couple of steps on Ray Lamb, and that was a beautifully thrown ball by Perry Patterson right into the wind. And how do you let somebody buy you Ray Lamb? Fun, that's two steps by Ray Lamb and doesn't come up with the catch. That would have been a 62-yard connection. Boy, he laid out beautifully for it right on his fingertips, and he just can't come down with the reception. One heck of a throw by Perry Patterson. Sure was. I mean, into a stiff wind. 52 to go in a 10 point deficit for the Q's. That time again throws. Got Gregory over the middle. First down, Temple Territory at the 49. Game of 19. Syracuse has all three timeouts remaining. Plenty of time on the clock at 244. Start the clock again. Pattern gets Bimbo, he'll step out of bounds. Picks up about four. Stops the clock at 236 to go. Patterson 19 of 33 for 234 on the afternoon, and he's kept a lot of plays alive. Temple has been trying to pressure the pocket, and Perry Patterson has done a nice job of eluding pressure and trying to keep Paul Pastoloni's orange in this football game. Patterson from Lancaster, Pennsylvania, about 90 minutes west of Philadelphia. There with a lot of friends and family on hand. Four-man rush by the Owls. Patterson hangs, throws underneath Jones. Close to a first down inside the 40. Looks like he does have the first down, gain of eight. Yep, they do move the sticks. So Good stop is in the box, 28 to go. Side, John, they're out of here. Yeah, if it's not blitz, the last place you want to hang the football up is over the middle, and that's exactly what Perry Patterson did. There was a free safety, a center fielder right in the middle of the field, and that was DeMarco Dawson who came up with the interception. Three big costly turnovers for Syracuse today. Here's Washington, first and 10, the 41. Ferguson with the carry. And James Weiss brings him down. Let's go, wait to go. Temple's last victory over Syracuse was the last visit here. Veteran Stadium 2002, 17-16. Missed extra point by Barber. We'll take a timeout and get back to the last 208 here at the Lake. Ten point lead for Temple. Robbie Wallace.
208 away from his second consecutive victory over Syracuse here in Philadelphia. 41-17 last year at the Dome, the Terry Dome. The Orange won that game. Ferguson straight up the gut. Picks up five, maybe six to the 49-yard line. Great day for Damian Rhodes, our Outback Steakhouse, outstanding back of the game. 29 carries for 200 yards and two touchdowns. Walter Reyes out of action with a shoulder injury. And Rhodes usually in tandem with Reyes, a big part of the running game. Load falling totally on the shoulders of Rhodes, and he and the offensive line did the job today. But turnovers, three turnovers today for Pasqualoni's Ball Club resulted in 10 Temple points. And that's where we are right now, 34-24. Well, Dave, we thought that would be the question, and quite easily Damon Rhodes answered that question. He was able to run for 200 yards on 29 carries, able to carry the load of Walter Reyes and Damian Rhodes today, and well-deserved afternoon, and it comes in, it looks like, with 202 left in a loss for Syracuse, but what an outstanding day he had on the ground. Tempo has two times half remaining. Syracuse has one remaining. Other scores, West Virginia 10-point uh, deficit and home to Boston College. That's a big surprise. Georgia Tech and ACC up by 17 on Connecticut. And Pittsburgh's come back to tie. Pittsburgh about an 11 point underdog in that game today out at South Bend. Washington's got it on a keeper. Look at this. Taken out of bounds by Anthony Smith. What a load carry today by Walter Washington. He has been magnificent. Gain of 17. And he's tired. The only thing he did wrong was go out of bounds on that play. Great what a fake, y'all. Awesome fake to the to the uh, tailback, and he's all alone down the Syracuse sidelines. And if I'm Walter, I've taken a beating all day. Maybe I just fall down and yeah. stay in bounds and, yeah, and not take the hit again yeah. because he's taken a beating with a bad shoulder as well. There's a time and place, you know, to keep running tough, and that one wasn't one of them. 29 for 185, three touchdowns. 10 for 19, passing a buck 30 in a touchdown. And this is just oh by the way stuff right now. It's Pollard with a late grip and throw down on Ferguson. Winding down at 1.39 to go. I'm about to jump out. They're going to get the first Big East win of the season. And I tell you what, if you're Boston College looking at this film, boys, you better find a way to stop 11 because that's gear it up. Key. Look at that, 130 yards through the air and one touchdown. He had 29 carries to match Damian Rhodes' carry output for 185 yards. Fourth in total offense, averaging 269.4. Beat that badly today. Ferguson, nowhere to run there. Just an outstanding performance by the Temple Owls today. We're in the final minute of play. I want to thank the men in the booth, the stage manager, Steve. Kerper and Rich Frisch and Dean Esposito on the stats. Sam Bertini, congratulations on the triplet. Yeah, Sam out of baby. Sam and the misses. Dave Bratchmas and audio, graphic stats, John Kennery, Mark Vidonic, and the entire crew here in Philly. I bet they were well fed today as well. <laughs> That's not even news. Give me a real news flash. <laughs> Temple Owls. Look at Bobby Wallace. How excited is he? Good for him. He's a guy that's highly regarded in the coaching community, the Big East staff. And you said you had a conversation yesterday. We, we were talking about it before the game, and I, you just had that feeling. Bobby Wallace, he had a, such a, a confidence about him, saying, hey, we have nothing to lose, and Syracuse has everything to lose. No question. And, and that's the way they play today, with nothing to lose, and, and Walter Washington carried them to victory. You can, uh, as the clock ticks away, the Temple Owls with a 10-point win over the Syracuse Orange. 34-24, they went out to a 14-0 lead, led 21-3, and their hammer, Walter Washington, used early and often, and here's Bobby Wallace with a well-earned game ball, yes sir -y. 
Damian Rhodes put up numbers in the day, but Syracuse, Lock not in this one. They dropped the three and two in the conference, five and five overall. Temple goes to one and four in the conference, two and eight overall. They just have no answers today for number 11, Walter Washington. Look at Ryan Wallace, the outstanding linebacker. Walter Reyes. This is all Temple today. I mean, yeah. from the get, absolutely. They started on a mission today, and, and Bobby Wallace, you know, probably felt that way all week, and, and it was a type of effort that the team built into this Saturday. I mean, they came up, and no matter what was going to happen in the beginning of the game, they weren't going to be deterred from their mission of, of having an opportunity to win this game at home. So two straight wins in Philadelphia for the Owls. For Syracuse. Series now at 25, 10 and 1 in favor of the Orange, but 0 and 2. And joining us right now, Bobby Wallace. Bobby, Dave Sims, and John Kinjemi upstairs. Congratulations on the victory. You had a feeling about this game, didn't you? Yeah, we did, dog. Uh, yeah, we just been playing so good since we got in the Big East. Uh, you know, this is, I imagine the fourth now. I don't know how the, the stats turned out, but uh, but we've just been there. We've been close. We're ahead of Pittsburgh in the fourth quarter. We're tied with Rutgers in the fourth quarter. And, of course, you know, it wasn't over till the end today, but uh, I just felt like we were playing good football. Coach, would you please get a bath, a hot bath for Walter Washington because <laughs> he's going to need it. What an outstanding performance. I was impressed early in the game the way he threw the football, but you know he's coming, and they just, Syracuse couldn't stop him. Well, it's just so hard to stop the quarterback running plays because you don't have enough people in the box. And right. Put enough people in there. If he's accurate, he can throw the football. And, you know, he did a great job, like you said, throwing accurately. And, uh, you know, he's a good quarterback. If he, did, if he never ran, ran a down, which we don't want that, but if he never ran the football, he's still a good quarterback throwing the ball. You know, it's interesting, Bobby, West Virginia getting pounded by Boston College. BC comes in here next week. Tell you what, you guys are in good shape to knock them off. Well, uh, I didn't know. I hadn't even heard that score. So, uh, you know, we just, I'm just going to enjoy this one. <laughs> I, don't I don't blame you. Don't, 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 don't even make it go there. <laughs> no, you're right. This is well-deserved. I tell you what, you had a lot of big plays on the Defense as well. Well, we did, and uh, of course the big intersection there at the end. I thought their quarterback was doing a great job hitting the sidelines uh, routes, and, and we weren't using enough time, but we were playing man coverage. We just uh, were struggling playing our two deep out of our regular defense. But when we finally went to a nickel package and got some two coverage in there and uh, intercepted that overthrown ball, but. Uh, you know, I think they did a great job in the fourth quarter on offense, keeping the pressure on us. Coach, I thought that the first play of the second quarter was awesome. 50 yard, 51 yard pass from Chuku to eBay, and it was a great call to, to change the change up. You know, it wasn't right. Walter Washington. Well, we've been working on that, and uh, you know, we felt like we'd have a chance at it. Uh, I thought Butchie eBay, who did a great job with the. Uh, you know, faking the uh, the blocking, and then uh, when the corner came up, he released. And Ike, he's a good, you know, he's our backup quarterback. Right. Really, and uh, and uh, so, you know, he threw a great pass, and uh, we were able to get a touchdown out of it. Hey, Bobby, congratulations. Terrific win. Go enjoy it. Uh, we'll thanks. see you again next yeah, week. Yeah, absolutely, thanks, Coach. Thanks, Jim. John. Uh, when we come back, we'll talk to Walter Washington, the hero today for the Temple Out. The resounding win is Washington. Changing some pleasant trees with Walter Reyes, and no doubt about it for Temple. I reach over and click up that toggle. The only place in the world where I can have a day where everything goes my way. All I want to do is race, Daddy. It's like you. We ain't the guy with the fastest car, son. Just the one who refuses to lose. Some people take out loans to buy a house, and in the end, they get a house. Well, I take out loans to race, and in the end, I get racing. Why'd you try to pass on the outside of the tournament? I figured I could win. But isn't coming in second better than wrecking? Second place, just the first loser. The winner, Mr. Dale Earnhardt. Look at Center City and uh, City Hall here in Philadelphia. Temple with a big win, 34-24 over the Syracuse Orangemen. And the hero of the day for the Orange, Walter Washington, Walter Dave Simpson, John Kinjemi. Great win today. And the thing I was impressed with, you had, you still had so much left in the tank as the game went along. 
yeah, um, I was just able to keep my poise and, and not use that much energy in doing certain plays, passing plays and running plays at the same time, so I was able to keep a lot of energy during the game. Well, Walter, I was so impressed with you throwing the football early in the game. You were very accurate early, but you were a sledgehammer running the football. They just could not account for your running the football. And how's that shoulder? Did it hold up? It held up, at, I mean, for the whole game. Um, at the end, it, it began to give out on me. Um, I'm just able, I was make it, able to make it through the game and um, keep going. Tell me what this win means. I mean, you've been knocking on the door. You've had some games where you, you, you were there and you have a couple of plays that went against you. This time, you guys get out quickly and you kept the pressure on all day. Yeah, this one means a lot to us. We know we were able to win every game that we played and this game was was very special coming in and, and getting the win. And we, we treasure it as a team and we're going to harness it and go on to the, next, and to the next week. Walter, did you guys have a feeling during the week that you could win this football game? Like It felt like Coach Wallace talking with him yesterday felt like Syracuse had everything to lose uh, coming in, and you guys just wanted to go out and, and play a, a solid game. Yeah, we knew we was able to win this game. Um, we was we was we was um, able to beat them last year, and wasn't able to do it. And we came into our own house, and we knew they were struggling on the road, and we was able to get this win. You must love running over DBs, because I know Anthony Smith and Diamond Ferry got sick of seeing you getting through the second and third level. Yeah, I love running over DBs. <laughs> I love them. Walter, thanks a lot. We'll see you next Go week. Go rest for, up for next week. Yeah, we'll see I you against Boston College. Thank you. Thanks for your time. We appreciate it. Walter Washington, talk about putting up some numbers. I'd love to run over DBs. <laughs> we did a heck of a job. <laughs> Back with more in a minute. Welcome back, everybody. 34-24. Walter Washington, Bobby Wallace, and the Temple Owls with a tremendous win today. Their first win in Big East play in the 04 season. Dave Simpson, John Ken, Jimmy. <laughs> Again, I'm glad I'm not a DB. No. Because he punished Syracuse all day. Anybody that says at the quarterback position, I love running over people, it, it is a talent. And that, that's probably the first time it's ever been said, but it, it's an art. I mean, he, he has it down to a science. He makes the defensive end miss. He makes the first linebacker miss. And whoever's playing DB gets a carry for three or four yards you know, down the field. He just does an excellent job of breaking the line of scrimmage and making positive plays with his legs. And you don't always get a chance to get a clean shot because he is elusive on top of the fact that he's so powerful. Let's take a look at some highlights of Walter Washington in action this afternoon. He threw the ball very effectively. This one to uh, Phil Goodman. Well, I thought early, Dave, he threw the ball well, and that was the key, going outside to Goodman. They thought they had a mismatch, but there's his strength again, going through the line of scrimmage, gets a bad snap, is off of people for touchdowns. Walter Rance did not play today. Shoulder injury suffered it last week against Pittsburgh. It turned out that it wasn't that big a factor. You, know, you always miss a guy that's one of your all-time, maybe top five running backs ever at Syracuse, but Damian Rhodes more than filled in yeah, going from minute one to minute last. Yeah, 29 carries for 200 yards. He was very productive in the absence of Walter Reyes, but he didn't have that one-two punch. He didn't have really anybody to spell him, and he wasn't tired at the end of the game, but the, he may have needed that extra that extra burst at the end, but he did an absolutely spectacular job of running the football. There were huge holes early in the game to get them back into the football game, but on the perimeter, he could use his speed, and on the option, on the edge, he was deadly to the outside. This is going to be a brutal week in Syracuse, fairly or unfairly. People have been on Paul Pasqualoni big time, and today's loss, this was really not as close to 10 points as might have. You can look at this as a 17-point or whatever, 34-24. The heat's going to really be intense now. Oh, absolutely, and, and they don't capitalize off of that double overtime win last week at home against Pittsburgh, and that's the big thing. You know, you can lose to Pittsburgh, you know, at home, on the road, maybe in a double overtime game, but you never want to go, you know, back-to-back -back visits to Philadelphia and lose to a Temple team who hasn't won in the Big East this season. So it's going to be probably a, a tough week, to say the least, for Paul Pascal. No question about it. Temple wins for the first time going back to the 0-2 season in Big East play. As we look at final statistics, the turnovers, uh, Syracuse, uh, two of those turnovers resulted in 10 points for the Owls. Rush yardage, 
285 to 235. Syracuse passed it a little bit better, but there's the points off a turnover to turn out to be the difference in this 10-point game. Yeah, Walter Washington was just a little bit better than Perry Patterson and Damian Rhodes. I think he just was able to carry the load offensively for Temple. They couldn't find an answer to stop his legs in the third and fourth quarter, and that's where they won the football game. Walter Washington, the big start today here in Philadelphia at Lincoln Financial Field. Back to wrap things up in a moment. 34-24, they out get their first win of the Big East season. It was a big one. 34-24, Temple over Syracuse as Syracuse falls to 5-5 five and five overall, 3-2 and two in the Big East. Temple goes to 1-4 in the Big East, 2-8 and eight overall. Other scores, 36-17 in the fourth. BC, we'll see BC next week here in Philadelphia. And West Virginia going to be tagged with its first loss. So that game next week, BC and Temple, is critical. That'll do it. Final score, Temple 34-24, BC Temple next week. For John Kinjemi, I'm Dave Sims. This has been a presentation of ESPN Regional TV, the leader in collegiate sports. So long, everybody. We'll see you next week, noontime. Boston College and Temple will get to see more of Walter Washington, Bobby Wallace, and those Temple Owls. We'll see you next week. Enjoy.